in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Spirit of the living God, I have come, open my eyes and empower me afresh. Lift your voice and cry. Let it be a cry of desperation. I have come, open my eyes and empower me. Open my eyes and embrace me. Open my eyes. Grant me the eyes that can see. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, before we sit, I just want us to take a minute or two and thank God from the depth of our hearts. Hold on, hold on. It, is in, it says it's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. That means it's a bad thing to be ungrateful. The mighty, you know, because of what God continues to do in this ministry, sometimes we can be caught up with this sense of familiarity. Yes, we know he's mighty, he's God. We know he turned someone's life around. It's God. But I want us to take our time and acknowledge him just in one or two minutes. Lord, we are not confused about the doer. And we are not ashamed to declare that without you, there is nothing that can be done. The Bible says, without him was not anything made that was made. Is someone being grateful tonight? I look at my life, oh God, and I see the transitions, a testament of your grace. Look what you've done, oh God, with my life. Are you praying? You've turned my life around. You have caused me to be the head and not the tail. You have put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. The Bible says many will see and fear and put their trust in Him. You have turned my mourning into dancing, my sorrow into joy. You've taken away fears, you've taken away sorrow. Lord, we thank you as individuals and as a family that you have so helped. We come before you tonight with hearts full of thanksgiving. Thank you for the miracles. Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for breakthroughs. Thank you for illumination. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for impartations, for liftings. Hallelujah. Father, tonight, I stand on behalf of your precious people and together we declare that we are grateful. Indeed, you are a good God. You have shown us your mercy. You have shown us your faithfulness. You have shown us your grace. We are recipients of your kindness. 
And Lord, we are not careful to say thank you tonight for the many things you have done in and through our lives. We owe you our lives. We owe you thanks. And so, Father, we pray from grateful hearts that you accept this gratitude. Let creation know that you are the God behind every result. Let the nations know that these are not the doings of men. Only God can do these things. And so we return thanks. We return thanks. And Lord, we pray, let it please you to continue doing wonders in this place. Indeed, you are the God that doeth wonders. Continue to open our eyes. Continue to engrace us with levels and dimensions of the spirit that will dumbfound principalities and powers. We thank you even for tonight. Thank you for encounters. Thank you for transformation. Thank you for light. Thank you for empowerment. Thank you for results. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. Um, I really want to appreciate everyone, particularly um, those who are coming here for the first time and the many who are following us online. It's always a joy to <clears throat> converge like this. It's a time of learning. It's a time of growing. I made a vow and I made a covenant with my life and my destiny that I will never stop learning. Never stop learning. For as long as I am alive and for as long as there's breath in my nostril, I will never stop learning. I acknowledge that there are many things I do not know. And so while we celebrate the ones we know, we continue to contend for the ones we do not know. When you become satisfied with where you are, then you have placed a peg on your growth. That means that you are telling God, there is no need to take me higher than this. And because God gave man a will, he will honor you. Praise the Lord. There has to be a hunger. A hunger that while it is being filled, another one is created. And you continue to rise from glory to glory, from glory to glory. Let me encourage us again to continue to be very open and receptive to the word of God. No man can be helped. Listen to me. No man can be helped who hates or ignores the word of God. The moment you ignore the word of God, you have ignored the creative dimension of God. And that means nothing will ever be made in your life. Praise the Lord. It is the word that makes men. I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. When we gather like this, week in, week out, it is always an encounter with the word of God which contains a revelation of the ways of God. Micah chapter 4, when you read from verse 2 and 3, the Bible says that when the mountain of the Lord has been exalted, all the nations shall flow to it. They shall say, come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of Jacob. Give us Micah chapter 4, please. He says, and he will teach us his ways. We are not there just for entertainment. He will teach us his ways. And then when we know his ways, we will walk in his paths. He will teach us his ways. So one of the primary tools for transforming the saints is the teaching ministry. What does it mean to teach? To bring to comprehension. 
to open your mind to understand the dynamics of an operation not just the awareness that it exists but how it works the greatest blessing you can have um, maybe second to your salvation experience is the opportunity to belong to a spiritual family where there is an accurate communication of the ways of God that means that if you continue to submit to the truths that you hear you are not the one who will lift yourself the truths were designed to lift you when you receive them and they become life let me tell you it may take time but inevitably your life will be turned into a sign and a wonder hallelujah praise the lord so my excitement every time we come here is not just because um, we're coming to fellowship as important as that is but that every time we come under this grace there will be an unfolding of a dimension let me tell you this you will be in great deception to believe that there is nothing else to learn and there is nothing else to study it's a joke compared to the dimensions we need to get to we are only a step out of the cave there are so many things that we need to learn that make for victory and then there are many things that we have known but have not become spirit and life and so there has to be a system of reiteration and emphasis right so that if you did not get it before you can get it now honestly god sees my heart that my prayer all the time is that you understand these things that i teach and you pay attention to them and watch the lifting power of light forget about darkness just focus on that light he says that was the true light that lighted every man there is a false light religion there is a false light the doctrine of men there is a false light the perspective of men that comes from their pride but there is the true light and that light can light every man not men of god the light lightens every man and he says you cannot light a candle and put it under a bushel if the candle is not lit you can hide it somewhere but the moment there is light upon that candle you cannot hide it and he will teach us his ways every week the lord continues to clear confusion from our lives and our destinies he continues to bring color to your life he continues to by his word give you a chance to life so that what i could not the privileges that i could not walk in either by reason of yesterday or by reason of my background or the limitations of my territory it is remedied when we feast upon the revelation of god's word we begin to learn his ways you are not growing if what made you afraid yesterday still makes you afraid today it means you are not growing there is no light the Lord is my light and salvation of whom shall I fear hallelujah many times you will almost be pressured to doubt what you believe and doubt what you receive why because sometimes many times in fact most times it takes a while before the Word of God um would manifest physically into the results that we desire and that gap satan is a master at taking advantage of that gap to make you think that the word of god is unfruitful are we together and so you have to trust the integrity of god first that whether or not you have any physical evidence that shows that what you hold is true trust the integrity of god the word of God has been proven again and again and has been found to be faithful. When you find yourself doubting the word of God, it's an attack. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so I came tonight to really, really 
first encourage us I'm afraid for any believer that does not have an intentional value for the Word of God that believer is not only a dangerous person to himself he is going to be dangerous to others your security in this kingdom is your understanding of the Word of God your security in this kingdom your immunity in this kingdom is the fortification that knowledge provides we must continually be passionate to know and to see not just to be aware of the realities that exist in the kingdom but to see to understand the dynamics of their operation with time i can know what you have believed by the results that show let me tell you this results in the long run do not lie results may not be a good basis for gauging your progress in the short term why because certain things will take time to prevail but in the long run when life gives you an appreciable period of time and the requisite level of results are not produced then you do not have any excuse are we together just because jesus did not come back to life day one you would be too fast on him to feel that he was not the resurrection and the life so be patient if jesus had not resurrected after one week we'll be in trouble because or we know that something is wrong destroy this temple and i'll build it in three days one week may be too long one day may be too short so somehow find consolation in the fact that even if my life is not producing certain results i will be patient 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 but then if after a long period of time my life also refuses to produce that result go back and check what could be wrong hallelujah if at all i have any fear in my life it is this i never want to hold on to something that after many years I will find out I was holding on to a lie. If at all I have any fear, it is this one thing. To hold on to something that I think is light. And then after so many years, discover that I've held on to shadows, rubbish, and nonsense. The Bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness why because there is a way that seemeth right unto a man and the end thereof are the ways of death it's like students writing an exam everybody is boldly writing something on that paper but the lecturer is the one who is going to mark and he knows exactly what he's looking for there are few people who will come out of an exam hall and start crying and say, I failed. Usually people will come out and with boldness and confidence. Some will say, this is a piece of cake. And so we all wait. Not for the students. Not for their pride. Not even for their fear. We wait for the lecturer. When the results are pasted, sometimes you will see someone who was quiet, didn't see anything. You would think he was afraid. And then you will come and see that that person cleared everything. And then you will find a loud noisemaker shouting around, making all kinds of claims. And not only will his results be written there, they will write, see me. That means your, your issue... Yes. Are we together continue to vet your revelation listen there is no revelation in the body of Christ today that is too big to be cross-checked no revelation I don't care from who and for how long every revelation if it is of God there should be no fear in vetting it because it should be consistent find out what you believe to know whether this is true or it's a lie don't run with lies and after many years you find out that you have wasted your time build a church on nonsense
built a ministry on nonsense built your own life on nonsense it is because of this he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping not discussing equipping of the saints what does it mean to equip to bring to your life the tools needed for the work equip comes from the word equipment is that true you equip me when you supply the tools needed for the work if i'm in the farm and you bring me syringe are we together and you bring me bandage you did not equip me you brought equipment but not for the work what will I do with a syringe in a farm? What will I do with a bandage in a farm? So to be, to be equipped does not mean to coordinate any information to me. No, 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 no. I must see where you are going first. And then by the intelligence of the spirit to know what will be needed for this journey. Hallelujah. When we get to the farm and they say, everybody bring out your tools some will bring seeds some will bring their hoe and then someone will bring a hammer he will bring a syringe both of them are not equipped for that good work so the bible says to equip the saints so that the saints now being equipped will do them work of the ministry it's one of the things we continue to do here that you are equipped by the spirit of god he grants us access to the blueprint. What are we becoming? What is the demand that will be placed on us? And when you know it, he begins to supply the various equipments. You will need favor here. Keep it. You will need the mercy of God here. Keep it. You will need speed here. Keep it. You will need to know how to engage warfare add it here you will need to understand your identity in christ keep it here are you seeing the, the tools now yes you will need to understand men keep it here you will need to understand the realm of the spirit and how it operates keep it here when you have those things like a toolbox it says go you will continue to receive other tools but go so when you stand and there is a door the Holy Spirit who is guiding you will say, where is that hammer that I gave you before? Bring it out. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in some. You get to a place and there is a door. Where is that key that I gave you? You pick it and you open that door. Are we together? Yes. When you do not excel, it is because you probably do not have the tools or you do not know how to use the tools effectively praise the lord our military people continue to write that the federal government supplies more equipment they have the know-how but the equipment the equipment the equipment we need to be equipped with the tools that will make for practical victory and for as long as you continue to remain interested god is never weary to supply these things please listen to me do not stop learning do not stop passionately pursuing the knowledge of the ways of god this is your victory that knowledge that light that understanding hallelujah praise the lord What I want to share with us tonight is very powerful, will be very fast. And um, the Lord himself will open our eyes and grant us understanding. Teach us to pray, part one. Teach us to pray. We'll be examining a bit about the prayer ministry of the saints and the spiritual dynamics that make for effective prayer we are exploring by the spirit of god why the prayer life of many people 
continues to be full of activities but with very little spiritual impact and it is very very important one of the dominion systems allocated for the saints is the capacity to legislate through prayer and you will think that many disciples um, and many who submit themselves to different platforms understand prayer um, but at the end of this series you will find out that very few people truly understand prayer may God grant us understanding two scriptures Psalm 65 and verse 2 please let's hurry up media Psalm 65 and verse 2 O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. This is a very powerful revelation. That means not everyone can hear prayer. This man got this scripture by research. I'm sure that he experimented praying to different deities. And watched carefully for the feedback. And he noted that there was one who seemed to always have the power to answer. And he says, O thou that hearest prayer unto thee. This is my recommendation. All flesh. That means that I have arrayed a sample of various people who have the capacity to hear prayers. And out of my research, this is my conclusion. All flesh be directed to this one deity because through experience we have seen that he sustains the ability to answer prayer Luke chapter 11 the ministry of Jesus is one of the the earthly ministry now I every time I study scripture I like to study the Gospels a lot um, not just because it's the interface between the old and the new but because the gospel is primarily the earthly ministry of Jesus. And the Bible says to look up to Jesus. That means model your life and your convictions after that pattern. When Jesus walked upon the earth, notice that Jesus had extensive times of mentorship and the teaching of those who would later become his apostles. Are we together? And the disciples continue to observe Jesus. They saw the kind of results that he got. And they noticed that every time before the results would come, he would communicate with the Father in a certain way before performing whatever he would have to do. They continued to note that progression. That Jesus did not just blindly do things. Sometimes he would retreat and tell them he was communicating with heaven and then he would return and they would see the results so the disciples continued to take note of that remember that they were walking with Jesus and they really wanted to be like him so they were studying everything that he was doing and in Luke chapter 11 when this was after the lecture that happened in the house of Mary and Martha. Remember? Martha was running around. This is Luke's gospel now. Martha was running around and Mary was sitting and you know, he said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. This is one thing is needful to sit at the feet of the master. So after all of that, um, we go to verse 11 and the Bible says, Jesus now is beginning to teach on prayer. So Jesus taught on prayer. Pay attention to anything Jesus taught on because that meant that it was it, it had a, a major role in the believer's work and in birthing victory. Jesus, Luke chapter 11 and verse 1. Are we there? 11 verse 1, media, not 11. 11 verse 1. And it came to pass that as he was praying, in a certain place so what was he doing in a certain place so we see that he was praying and we see that there was a location the bible says when he sees that means when he finished brought it to an end one of his disciples said to him lord 
teach us to pray. That means men can be taught to pray. Prayer as a ministry must be taught to be effective. Now, many believers do not know that it is the teaching on prayer that makes prayer effective. Not praying. The understanding that sponsors your, your action is where the victory is. Our, our, our world today is full of people who believe that the only way to pray is just to talk and begin to shout. And you will soon learn in this series that many people continue to shadow box. There is no accuracy. The disciple did not say we cannot pray. No. The problem here was not prayerlessness. I hope you understand what you are saying. The Bible says, the Bible did not say the disciples later came. Uh -uh, they were there. Listen, he finished praying and one of his disciples said to him, he was within range. So we are not discussing prayerlessness here. This is not a backsliding person saying, Lord, restore my prayer life. This is not an issue of restoration. This is an issue of praying amiss. There is no result. And he's saying, Lord, we give up. We've been trying to copy you, but it's very clear we are not getting something. So teach us to pray. So prayer should be taught. Not just conducted. Okay, everybody, oh yeah, open your mouth and pray. Mm -mm. Prayer should be taught. If all we continue to do is to say, pray, 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 everybody pray. Very soon we will be tired, like many believers are. Prayer meetings in many churches have the least... Um, uh, attendance do you know why it's a testimony it's a report card it's a track record thank god that's not the case with this ministry do you know why because prayer works when prayer works people will prove to you by their commitment many churches and many assemblies today are frustrated prayer meetings are in, in, in respectfully speaking some of the most boring and pointless and people come and you know they don't expect an answer And while they are praying, different people are just conjuring versions of ways that they, they come up with to try to communicate. Some are not serious. Some are even typing because they, they feel it's more profitable. They are aware that it will not be answered. So the disciples said, teach us to pray. Someone said, teach us to pray. I thought Jesus would turn and say, no, you don't teach prayer. Pray, my friend. Jesus is about to answer that prayer now. Teach us to pray. Please go back verse 1. Let's finish it up. Verse 1. As John taught his disciples. Are you seeing that John was a very, very, very good mentor? John taught the disciples. The disciples of John were not just great people for nothing. John did not just pray in the wilderness. You produce prayer warriors not just by praying by the accurate teaching of the prayer ministry in many churches they just say if you want to join prayer band that means if you have passion for prayer now understand this i'm not trying to be sarcastic uh, if you want to join prayer band and then you know everybody who believes that he has some kind of zeal for spiritual things they now join the prayer band and say we're now going to pray and everybody's waiting for the prayer point we are going to ask the Lord to move in a way and a manner that even me, I don't even know. Just open your mouth and pray. And you know, everybody is just praying and, and, and honestly. Listen, I know people are dissipating energy and I don't mean to be sarcastic. But stand from God's standpoint and you are watching people praying. And you see someone praying and just say, just tell everybody, stop. Stop where you are. What were you doing? And what do you mean what I was they asked us to pray I know but what did you expect what were you saying you will be amazed to know how many people who did not have any idea of what they were doing it was just an honor to a ritual an energetic ritual are we together verse 2 and he said unto them, Jesus now, I love Jesus. Ah, 
I love Jesus. I really love Jesus. The way he mentors is powerful. The confidence. Teach us to pray. Of course you don't know how to pray. Sit down. Let me teach you. And Jesus is teaching now. When ye pray. So they were already praying. So he is not restoring their prayer life. He is rearranging the pattern to make sure it works. Are you following me this night? Jesus did not say, you guys don't even pray. Mm -mm. He said, I know what you are asking for. You have been praying and praying and this thing is not working. And now you are saying, teach us to pray. Even as John taught the people. So Jesus is now saying, when ye pray, say. Say. This should be the content of your prayer. You want to understand this properly, you have to go to Matthew's account. Um, we'll delve here. I, I brought you here to see the teachers to pray. Let's go to Matthew's account, chapter 6. Um, and then we'll see what Jesus Christ... Matthew chapter 6. Go to verse 4. Alright, 5 now. And when thou prayest, so we're continuing now, another person's account. Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites. What is the relationship between prayer and hypocrisy? Jesus is talking about prayer and he's now talking about hypocrisy. That when you pray, you can pray like hypocrites. So how do hypocrites behave? They love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen, not that the prayer should be answered. So the hypocrisy there is the motif behind that. That is possible a man can be praying and what you are doing in the spirit is hypocrisy. You are more concerned about the testament of those seeing you than you are about the, the contact you make and the answer it produces. The Bible says whoever assumes that state is a hypocrite. Are we together now? They love to do it. So hypocrites love to pray. But the Bible says that the the motive behind their prayer is to receive some kind of self-respect from men. They are not interested in the prayer being answered. They are just concerned about having a testimony before men that my prayer life is not down. And believe me, there are so many people who are victims of this. They are more concerned about your hearing them pray they are more concerned about the respect and the honor that you give them by reason of your witnessing their prayer life. They are not concerned about the efficiency of the prayer. Their real reward and their real attraction is not answer, it's not fellowship. It is the fact that they want men to know and to attest to the fact that you are prayerful. Hallelujah. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. What is their reward? The applauds that they get from men. So when you see me pray all the time, for instance, if somebody says, does Joshua Selman pray? He says, ah, the other day. You know that voice we're hearing, he said, well, as if it was a, a tractor that was cutting. That, that was him. That is my reward. What is the reward? The respect that I receive. Whether perceived or real, you have gotten your reward. Next verse. But when, but thou. That means since you taught me, you want to use my own formula now. It says you, when you pray, enter into your closet. Now, the idea is not secrecy. Please understand what Jesus is saying here. I will explain to you. It looks like he's just talking secrecy. Because he said, your father who sees you in secret. But I'll explain something very powerful. He says, enter into thy closet. The idea is not hiding from people. The idea is the purity of your motif. That your focus should not be centered on just the visualizations of men in your prayer. But that your father who sees what is the purpose of this secrecy. So that you will not be seen. To purify the sincerity of that activity. So it is not so much about hiding away from people. Than it is the purity of the motif. The intent that is back of your prayer. Do you get the idea now? So that you don't think that Jesus is just saying, just go and hide somewhere. How do you now pray as a prayer band? How do you now pray as a church? The idea is not just secrecy. 
the spirit and the intent of what Jesus was saying here was that the secret place helps you because there there's no point to prove there's no human there now to be able to corrupt the purity of your desire so in that similitude so the secret place is not really just a place it is a mindset it is an understanding you can carry the secret place to a public place of prayer and that while you are praying your concern is not really the accreditation of men but the purity of that fellowship are we following tonight teach us to pray and when thou hast shut the door pray to your father in secret and your father who is in secret will reward you openly you now understand what i what i explained here next verse verse seven but when you pray now watch this use not vain repetitions as the heathen do now hold on jesus is not saying don't repeat prayer He's saying there is a way the hidden do. You have to study this contextually. In ancient times, there was a way that the hidden prayed. They prayed doing a lot of enchantments to idols. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Jesus is not saying repetition in prayer is wrong. Uh -uh. He's qualifying what he's saying. He's saying there is a repetition that is in the similitude of how the hidden operate because in those days those who prayed to idols and the rest they used magic books and they used all kinds of books that had um, activities of sorcery and all of that so the, they did not understand what they were saying the miracle was not in the understanding the miracle was in the ritual of the enchantment there are many cultures that still do it today there are many um, occultic groups today that still do it I watched a video where um, a place in Asia, I would not mention the name. I watched a video, not that they told me. Someone had, I think it was, it was cancer, cancer of something. You could see the swelling. I mean, they were showing it, the, the visuals was there. And these guys are doctors, but they are also healers. They have their lab coat, but they also, you know, they, they have their way of using energy and all of the rest to heal. I watched, it's not like they told me. The person to go through the surgery was lying down there and they did not perform any surgery in terms of any um, opening of the body and all of that. They started chanting something. They were chanting it and they started chanting it fast. You know, repeating it for a very long time until they themselves were almost possessed by it. And while they were talking, right in the, the uh, um, video, you would see the cancer just melting, going down like that. It was over. And they all clapped for themselves, hugged themselves. Jesus is saying there is a way the hidden. When they are praying to an idol, an idol does not need your understanding. Your idol just needs your motion and your alliance or allegiance to a ritual. Are you getting the point now? The hidden do not expect their God to speak. They don't expect all of those things. So they chant a lot of things. And he's saying, when you pray, I have noticed that you have borrowed a prayer life from other hedonistic nations. So when you pray to God, you don't pray like you are praying to someone alive. And you are victims of enchantments that are akin to magic books. Are we together now? You notice in the book of Acts, one of the exploits of the apostles, there were books that were brought out, they were burned. Some of those books were used for prayer. Till today, they still use it. There are many pseudo-Christian sects and there are many other occultic groups that make use of certain books. Where there are enchantments, they can tell you, chant this 90 times, chant this 5 times, chant this, and the person is just doing it. So I'm, I'm trying to balance this because many people have erroneously said this to mean that um, the Bible, Jesus was teaching here that don't repeat any prayer. That means if you say, Lord, I bless you, that's all right. If you repeat it again or Father, grant me this and you say it again, it is unbelief. That's not what the Bible is saying. Jesus himself, if that is the thought, he broke the rule. Because when Jesus was in Gethsemane, he prayed using the same word three times. So he certainly was not teaching here about vain repetition are you getting this now remember god is teaching us how to pray so he's giving us the rules of engagement 
to understand the boundaries of effective prayer do not use vain repetition in the similitude of the hidden are we together and there is a reason why he says that oh dear matthew let me turn there quickly so that we make progress is god already helping someone when thou prayest use not vain repetition so notice what jesus is saying now jesus has spoken about three things teach us to pray and jesus says sit down when you pray number one do not be like the hypocrites that's the first thing he's addressing in teaching you to pray and then he describes his concept of hypocrisy are we together now we have to observe the things that jesus said to observe because in in matthew 28 he said teaching them to observe everything that i have shown you teach them pay attention all the things i stress stress it when you are teaching them all the things that were minus let it remain minus as you're teaching them teaching them to observe don't just bypass these things and go to our father who art in heaven that's a hedonistic once you don't have the revelation that prayer becomes a powerless ritual are we together yes don't jump the steps number one the first blockage he says is the propensity to be a hypocrite and what is the hypocrisy that your motif has not yet been purified your you are more concerned about the witness of men the accreditation that men have and it's true because you see in the world that we live in it's a wonderful thing to have a good report a good report before men is a noble thing however with respect to your dealings with god sometimes it is better to not have a good report before men and then have a good report before god but because of the way our civilization has been so programmed um it looks more profitable to have a good report before men so jesus is saying that is the first thing you have to correct the first challenge to prayer life is not attack he has not mentioned a demon here he has not even mentioned satan here can you imagine that he's already showing you the things that can waste your time that when you pray under this condition you were not praying so as i approach effective prayer the first revelation is to be able to ward off the propensity for hypocrisy by ensuring that whether or not people look at me i trust by the help of the holy spirit we'll learn that in in the latter part of the series by the help of the spirit to be able to look past the deception oh i'm praying now and wow someone will be there and say wow look at this guy i mean just look at the way this guy is praying this is two hours and he's, he's still going he's saying be careful while that is commendable because it can inspire that person to rise you can be a victim of your own action because a time will come when you will reduce yourself from the real contact with his presence to you are just you want people to see the scribes and the pharisees that's the first thing we are correcting the desire to be seen and to be accredited as a prayerful person for the sake of personal applause of men the bible says you have your reward there then the second thing that god is dealing with now is the to enter your closet you see the idea is still buttressing on that point i told you that the idea is not just to be enclosed in a place although listen although to be honest with you if all of your prayer is public you don't know much about prayer are we together because the real encounters that will happen to you literally will happen in the secret when you are alone with god everybody say alone with god yes when it has to do with prayer ministry there are dimensions of prayer where it is not husband and wife it is not father and children it is not pastor and members are we still together it is not colleagues it is not even prayer group members or church members or department members there are dimensions in prayer like jacob where you have to be alone there are certain things god cannot come in to reveal when you are corporate you have to be alone 
But whether you are alone or you are outside, you must carry the idea of a secret life. That means that when we are praying here as a congregation, we lift up our voices and we begin to pray. In your mind, you must be able to pray with the assumption that you are alone with God. Not just that we are corporately together. Because there is a level of self-consciousness that will rob you from receiving from God. Are we together? There are people, for instance, the awareness that someone is looking at them. You just remember that, ah, maybe this person likes me. Or let me not waste my chance now while I'm praying. You see, that, this is what Jesus is trying to stop. When you assume you are in the closet, you are not concerned whether your trouser is going down or whether your shoe is coming out that the focus is that I am communicating with the God of all flesh to him that answers prayer. This simple reason is why many people have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit because they carry their beauty into the experience. They carry their masculinity into the experience. How do I now start praying in tongues? Bah, 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 bah. I, I, I schooled in UK. And uh, now when I start doing this, will I look fine? Will I not look fine? Uh, am I going to disgrace my countenance? Jesus said, if you don't carry that mindset of secrecy while you pray, you will be too self-conscious to make spiritual contact. And then the third thing he's addressing is vain repetition in the similitude of the hidden. Now look at this. The Bible is not a magic book. The name of Jesus is not a magic um, a, a journey. You see that? There is power in the name because of the person whose name it is. Not because of the name itself. There is an owner to that name and that owner is alive. BMW is not a car. BMW is a company. They produce cars. So that signature there, the, you can trace a real person who is the owner of that company. Jesus is not just an enchanted name that has power in it. No, at the back of that name is a real person. Are we together now? And if you just focus on the name as a magic ritual and do not focus on the person, you are behaving like the hidden. This is why, let me, listen to me. I'm teaching you this. It is why for many years, I, I shared with you my experience. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, and these wicked demons did not leave me. Because the revelation of the person behind the name, I wasn't really interested. I just know that in Jesus' name, ask the sons of Sceva. Huh? Ask the sons of Sceva. We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. And the demon said, nonsense. That's not how it works. Jesus we know. Paul we know. Who are you? And the demon pounced on them, the Bible says. Stripped them naked and beat them and drove them out. Imagine a prayer team going into a room to minister to someone. All right, let's go. A delegation and they enter and you hear silence for a long time and you are wondering you are seeing lots of things going on motion and you think my god you can imagine what the devil is going through and the next thing you see a door open forcefully and you see adults running naked all beaten by one person do you know what reproach that testimony is to the name of the lord let me tell you, if it happened in the days of the, of the sons of Sceva, it can still happen today. Because those demons have not left it. They are around. What if the demons that beat that guy are the ones oppressing your family? Use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think. So he's talking mindset here. The vain repetition is a mindset issue. For they think that they shall be heard. Not for the power and the potency. But for their much speaking. Their mindset is pegged at the volume of the speech. And not the power that is back of what they are saying. Not the truthfulness of the communication. But the volume. 
So he's addressing hypocrisy. He's addressing um, that, that life that makes you self-conscious that you are not able to focus. And then number three, he's addressing the issue of vain repetition, that the power in prayer is not in the enchantments. The power in prayer is in, well, let me not go ahead of myself. Eight, be not ye therefore like them. Why? This is the revelation that exempts you from that kind of life. For your heavenly father know it what ye what things ye have need of before you ask him wait keep this scripture it's a very dangerous scripture that means your heavenly father is aware so why will he allow you to still pray don't just jump this talk if my heavenly father knows that i need rent oh god why frustrate me to pray before you send rent why frustrate me to do these things are you seeing that now your heavenly father knows what you have need of before you ask him um this can mean many things number one this can mean that prayer then is not limited to petitions alone your heavenly father knows the needs you have but he's more interested in fellowship so he will still allow you to come are we together he can grant you the answer without you coming but that will rob him an opportunity for fellowship so he will allow you to come in prayer so that prayer will do many things it automatically tells you that the purpose of prayer is not just a system for needs to be met your heavenly father knows that you have this need before you ask him but number two it also validates the pattern of god what is the pattern of god the pattern of god is that he gave man dominion are we together now and he gave man a will and the moment God gave man a will, it became scripturally incorrect for God to veto the will of man and supply anything. Mm -mm. Even at the expense of your eternal salvation, he allows you to choose him. At the expense of your eternal doom, he will still not force salvation on you. Are we together now? Yes. Nine. After this manner, the mentor Jesus he didn't say pray like this no he would have brought a lot of error he said after this manner what is manner the pattern are we together now it is not copying the recitation but that in this thing we call the Lord's Prayer like a ladder there is a pattern discerned by the spirit the pattern and use it in your prayer and it will make your prayer as effective as my own he did not say copy the words our father our father who art in heaven who art in heaven no that's not what jesus was saying of course i believe there's an advantage just quoting it like that the way it is but the idea was not for you to recite you become like the hypocrite again he's saying after this manner so let's study it now that means in this this description is a hidden code are we together a code of operation that reveals the sequence of effective prayer are you ready <sighs> let me pause there a bit and just share a few things as a background I wrote a few things here that I don't want us to miss. Number one, I wrote here that prayer is part of the priestly ministry of all saints, all believers. Prayer is part of the priestly ministry. Please, if you're writing, you may want to write it down. That prayer is part of the priestly ministry. So when the Bible says we have been made unto our God, Revelations 5 and verse 10, uh, kings and priests, there is the priesthood ministry of the church. And that part of the priesthood ministry of the church is to offer that incense of prayer. So all believers are called to pray. There might be individual people who by reason of their call and the election, um, have been graced to function 
in certain dimensions of the prayer ministry. However, all believers are called and mandated as a priestly ministry to pray. Matthew chapter 21 and verse 13. Jesus himself, after flogging people from the temple, remember when Jesus made a whip and flogged all the people, when he drove all of them out and turned the exchangers and turned everything, released all the doves and the cattle to go away, he said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. So God wants his house to be called the house of prayer. The house where there is access to commune with the Father. My house shall be a place where communication with heaven should not be difficult. Are we together now? A house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves or robbers. So God himself wants his house to be called the house of prayer. Why pray? Write it down. I want to give you six reasons. I think I, we have to do this before we go into the dynamics of the patterns of prayer. Even if we can't finish it today, we'll take it off next week. It's important for us to understand. Why do we have to pray? Number one. In this kingdom, we pray first because it is a command. Believers are commanded to pray. This is a little Bible study now. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. Please write it down. And then 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. Remember, we are taught to pray. So there is, we are, we are receiving the teaching now so that our prayer will be effective. Prayer is a command for believers. Luke 18 and verse 1. And he speak a parable unto them, unto this end, that men, not some men, men, once you are a man, you are mandated in this kingdom to pray. He speak a parable that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17. He says, pray without ceasing. That does not mean pray from morning till night. You will live an ineffective life. It means be consistent in your prayer life. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Don't go on break and resume after five months. Are we together? Be consistent. Be consistent in your prayer life. The second reason why we need to pray is that it is one of the strategies for fellowship with the Father. It is not the only platform, but it is one of the, fellowship, the, the platforms. Many people think that prayer is the only way to fellowship with the Father. No, no. But it is one of the major strategies for fellowship. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. Paul is teaching here, and he's teaching the church in Corinth about prayer. And he said, Please give it to us, first Corinthians chapter 14. And now he's saying it, of course, with respect to praying in tongues. But he said, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, look up, please, speaketh not unto men, not unto men, not unto men. This is not the gift of, of tongues. Are we together? Like a, a ministry, one of the nine gifts. No. He's saying, He speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth it. How be it in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. So it's very important. It is one of the strategies for fellowship, for communion. It was Paul that was, was praying and he said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember? He said the love of God. And then he said the communion. That's where we get the word koinonia from. The communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Be with you always. The communion. It means the sharing together. It means intimacy. It means intercourse. It means the participation of the Spirit. The oneness that comes through fellowship 
he's praying that it remains with the saints why because it is only with god that all things are possible and so whatever makes you to lose your connection and to rob you of an opportunity for intimacy has also destroyed your potential for efficiency it is one of the strategies for fellowship number three why do we pray please never forget this god is making our prayer lives fruitful why do we pray number three it is a platform for growth and transformation the growth process of the believer was so designed that prayer will play a major part in your growth that means believers that don't pray cannot grow effectively in fact cannot even grow it is a platform for growth and transformation three scriptures Luke chapter 9, please give it to us. Luke chapter 9 from verse 28 to 29. Luke chapter 9 from verse 28 to 29. And it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up the mountain to do what? Not to rest, to pray. Next verse. And as he prayed, what happened? The fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering. That glory and that transformation came as a result of prayer. So when you pray, it is a system allocated for your growth and for your transformation. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 4. That's the second verse you will write under that point. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 4. After that, we'll go to the book of Jude. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself. The word edified there is, is an architectural term. It means that he builds up. He builds up himself. Are we together? That means that you build up yourself akin to an exercise. Imagine someone who is working out every day and just making sure that he's fit and healthy this is what he's saying that he that prays in an unknown tongue he that prays now edifies himself so it's a system for growth jude jude has only one chapter and we'll read verse 20. it says but ye beloved if you are not beloved that scripture is not for you but but ye beloved building up yourselves Building up yourselves, building up yourselves on your most holy faith by praying, by praying. You build up yourself on your most holy faith. What does this mean? That you are growing and increasing in discernment. You are growing and in your, your faculties of interacting with the realm of the spirit are being heightened and fine-tuned in the place of prayer one of the classic signs of prayerlessness is lack of discernment you know immediately that a man's prayer life is dead when your discernment is dead what is discernment the faculty of perception the faculty of spiritual perception the ability to be able to perceive the impulses of the realm of the spirit to perceive danger to perceive joy to perceive the activity of angels are we together now all of these things remember look up please i've taught you here that man can i use you please come doctor come um, jakes stand here watch this man is spirit everybody says spirit that man lives in a body man is not spirit like a separate entity soul like a separate entity then body like a separate entity that teaching is not very accurate are we together man is a spirit primarily that means his sphere of reality is the realm of the spirit this spirit cannot interact with the earth realm because based on the law of territory it must have a material body that is consistent with that ecosystem to be able to walk are we together now so this spirit if it finds its way to the earth it will move the same way demons are moving and so god made this spirit a legal 
occupant in the earth by giving it a material body are we together but there, there was a challenge and god needed to solve it why because the earth realm and the realm of the spirit they are all part of god's kingdom but the dimensional nature of their operation makes it impossible for spirit to operate and body to come there you cannot switch them so there is a there is an issue now the spirit cannot relate with the body because there is a disparity in the realms and so god decided to create a bridge the faculty that connects the spirit and the body he called it a mind are we together now that that mind consists of will emotions and intellect those faculties were put as the bridge that the spirit will use to interact with the body and the bridge that the body will use to execute the impulses of the spirit now watch this when you call man a soul what you mean is the spirit in partnership with this faculty of consciousness that's what is called a soul are we together now if a man dies you don't see three people coming out or two people in the air going to either heaven or hell and then you see a body lying down there no there is no record of that in scripture jesus gave up a ghost not many ghosts only one spirit left that body and only one spirit returned are you are, are we together now yes the realm of the spirit watch this controls the physical realm the bible tells us that that the things that appear paraphrasing came from the things which do not appear remember i never said the things that are not real they just are unreal from this dimension that means that man being spirit and dwelling in a body has an advantage of the duality of realms are we together now that dual nature is what makes the body to receive impulses that it cannot explain so when you stand and suddenly there is a heaviness in your heart you don't even know why there's no joy again it's as if the spirit man is perceiving something from the realm of the spirit and then because it is connected through the mind to the body it's trying to transmute that but because please help this lady but because your prayer life is down look up please the, the, the fortitude to receive that perception so that the body can execute what the spirit is saying is not there. I'll give you an instance. The spirit of death can be roaming around a family. Are we together? And now, because in the realm of the spirit, there are no secrets. I hope you know. Um, there are secrets, but what I mean is that nothing is hidden, really. There are secrets even in the spirit, but nothing is hidden. Are we together now watch this when the spirit of death is roaming around your spirit is perceiving it your spirit knows the spirit of death knows if you came out of your body in the realm of the spirit you will no longer be in a vision at ah, death what are you doing here say, ah, i've been here is it that I'm, I'm not just coming i've been there but because the body was unfruitful excuse me are we together the body was unfruitful so when you begin to pray what happens is that there is a rearranging because the way the flesh works it, it attempts to subjugate the spirit to a point where it cannot gain that ascendance this is where the advantage of things like fasting and so on and so forth can come in are we together now all of this we are going to discuss but generally this man the spirit of death is loitering around his vicinity and he's moving around because he's deadened in the flesh his organs of perceiving imagine in the physical that you cannot hear hello you cannot um, smell you cannot see you cannot sense are you alive are we together now yes you are not alive because i can be killing you and you are not aware the only thing you just know that you are fainting and then you're going to coma and die because the ability is not there i can be talking to you supplying an information you cannot hear the same way there are physical senses there are also spiritual senses and that these spiritual senses the same way you have blindness you can have spiritual blindness deafness you can have spiritual deafness are we together yes 
The same way your body, I don't know the name of what the sickness is, where people don't feel when you touch them. You can have that same thing too in the realm of the spirit. So even if the Holy Spirit is saying, Mr. Man, you are not, you are not there at all. And the Bible says, I'm explaining to you that when you begin to pray, what is happening is that there is a fine tuning. The spirit, your spirit man begins to gain ascendance and you can stand and just sense and know. And because your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit is heightened, you, it, the Holy Spirit is at liberty based on the strength of your spirit man to use whatever faculty he pleases to reveal to you what to do so he can use your hearing and you hear he can use your seeing you will see a vision he can use the knowing in your heart and you come with perception he can even move you into his will the more you pray you are giving the holy spirit the versatility of options to be able to communicate the will of god to you are you getting what this scripture is saying now that means that people who don't pray imagine that this guy is blind spiritually deaf on one ear spiritually are we together cannot sense anything look at the little allowance the holy ghost has to communicate destiny things to him so you can have a dream but because you are spiritually blind you will see nonsense you will get up from that dream and write things that was not really what was revealed why because the problem is blindness remember paul was blind but he was still seeing he was had he was in a vision he said when you understand this prayer is no longer about give me tea give me bread you are saying holy spirit you are at the mercy of my faculties of interaction your your possibilities are limited by the space i give you could it be that if you were prayerful and you became sensitive, you would have been able, not just something dangerous, you would have been able to know. Let me tell you this, when you become very sensitive, the Holy Spirit, depending on the gravity of what he's communicating, he can use multiple channels to strengthen your conviction. Hmm. Very powerful what I'm sharing with you. We pray because it is a platform for growth and transformation i will never forget how koinonia started we were already you know doing ministry and doing a lot of things but i just knew that for some reason a season was about to come to a close and another season would start everybody say perception that's right that's what happens and it's not enough to perceive you can perceive and what you perceive is unfruitful to you because you don't know what it is and you don't know what to do about it are we together and i remember that time i just got up one morning happy blessing the lord for the day and suddenly the lord just summoned me go for a retreat immediately i just packed my things people you are not seeing me again the Lord is calling me now what if I got there and God said I don't know why you are here who asked me see I pray for you sincerely may God have many options on how to communicate his intent to you may look at me I'm going to be ah, I wish oh dear Holy Spirit grant us grace let's see what we can do I will be showing you from this teaching that if you are blind spiritually and suddenly without growth and renewal satan can give you an aberration of vision and show you something see a faculty that god is not used to leading you with he will never use it on sensitive matters of your life this is one way you know you are under attack already let me give you an example ah. watch this do you know that I will be showing you as we continue that every believer based on your personalized work with God, God has studied you and for every season there is a primary channel of spiritual communication. The most accurate that God has found based on your renewal. When you change seasons and you grow, he will readjust too. 
So there are people who God has found out that based on his work with them, dreams are the most powerful way of releasing the fullness of his will and then they believe in it. Because it's one thing for God to release an impulse through a channel, but if your reception is wrong, you will corrupt the purposes of God. It's hard work what the Holy Ghost does in men. So he has to keep trying. That's why there are many times it's like you had something, but you are not clear. God is testing those faculties and seeing your response. Are we together now? Ah, it's as if I had something and you are not serious about it and God said, ah, no. if we work with these guys hearing, something is going to be wrong. Let's go back to the dream and it's better to fight the warfare there and fine tune the dream. Are you now seeing why a dream was used for Joseph? Now watch this. Many believers have not been used to God speaking in a certain way. And then when it now comes to major decisions in their lives, the devil will now use a method. Uh -uh. The way you kill the bear, the way you kill the lion is how you will also kill Goliath. When Saul gave him another arsenal, David said, I'm not used to this. I was not trained with this. How you were trained is how you will fight the battle. So when God trains you, listen, please, this series is very powerful. Listen, God trains you and finds out that the way you are, the environment you came from, the unbelief there is too great. The strongest point until you marry and leave that environment, a dream remains the most valid way of his communicating. Your hearing will always be in error because the environment cannot allow you to grow that way. God will limit himself to that thing. You will find out that 90% of your hearing will be nonsense. So when we have a responsibility as believers to study the various channels of spiritual communication, versus our believing them and the results over time if you study this you can know that when god says release your best arsenal to hear me you know what to release there are people this their ears is like a magnet there is if god speaks even if god speaks from Kwangila, they will hear they have sharpened their ears but if god shows them anything they, are, they will not see so God will limit his walking to their ears. There are others. Look at prophets in the Bible. There were others who were seers. There were others who were not just hearing alone. Please help them, those under the anointing. They were not just hearing. Listen, look up please. And they were not just seeing. But these were people who God will make them act what he wants to do. Physical acting so that they cannot doubt it. A prophet was asked to lie down on one side of the bed for one year. A prophet was made to marry a prostitute called Goma to act out the harlotry of the nation of Israel. You cannot doubt that one now. Ah. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the seas. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light, arranging the stars to your feet. Blessed are you, O oh Lord, our God, eternity's holy King. Blessed are you, O oh Lord, our God, whose words Listen, part of what prayer does to you, we've not started dealing with the patterns of prayer. We are just examining why we should pray. You have to, the way God will tell you, wear these shirts today. He cannot use the same thing to say relocate to the US. The gravity of, if, if I don't wear the shirt that God wants me to wear today, the consequence will not be as grave as God saying my destiny is in the US and I'm in Nigeria. So he will not use the same channel. He needs to use the channel that sends the strongest signal so you can receive. Look at this. One of the hardest things for the saints 
is to know when seasons end. Let me tell you, the proof of real stamina in prayer and in the spirit is the ability to discern when seasons end. It's a very difficult thing. That's why many ministries cannot grow. Because to know when you need to shift, to know when you need to relocate, to know when you need to start the TV ministry, your spiritual maturity is not tested in word of knowledge and prophecy. The ability to know that you have gotten to a crossroad in the spirit, I tell you, you can start another journey. For 10 years, you can be accurate in life and in ministry, and you just veer off. That's how you see someone who say, I'm a prophet today, tomorrow, and then he's confused. Our channels, listen, this, this duality of realms is where the confusion is. Because the way the realm of the spirit works, sit down for a few minutes, we are going to pray. The way the realm of the spirit works, listen to me, and the way the physical realm works, is not correct or, or it, it does not work at the same um, frequency watch this there are times if your spirit is healthy and is in partnership with the Holy Spirit there are times that Satan who is the master of the flesh realm will create emergency in the earth realm but when you check in the realm of the spirit your spirit man is at peace and he said forget it nothing is really going on if you don't know this you will panic over everything so when your spirit is strong, even when there are all kinds of things, you cross-check. Once the spirit is not betting anything, no matter what is happening here, you ignore it. This is why many people are stable. Satan knows that this, this faculty that connects you has a serious issue there. So he will play with water in the physical realm. And all of a sudden, when that is happening you are just seeing everything shaking hey and then the spirit of fear is trying to manipulate you but when your spirit is strong you know how to cross check when there is an emergency in the realm of the spirit sometimes there can be absolute peace in the earth realm and so you find out that god is telling you start running and you say god but there is peace here he's saying run run there is trouble and in suddenly the cloud of darkness just comes to cover people. See, I tell you why many people do not pray. It is not your fault. It is the ritual. This is what I'm trying to correct. I have watched this for many years. Many believers pray and they do not achieve much in prayer because they do not understand the scope, the boundaries, nor the importance of effective prayer. There are people today who have gone to the grave simply because they did not strengthen the capacity to function in these dual dimensions. That which is spiritual, that which is spirit, is of the spirit is spirit, and that which is of the earth is earthy. Way before your boss starts to threaten you, the realm of the spirit has picked the signal. Why? Because it's already seen the formation of evil spirits. It is the manifestation of the patterns that kept your father down. And six months before your boss starts acting out, the Holy Ghost is already sending the signal. But because you're, you had the dream, but you didn't understand what it... Ha, I know that I wrote an exam, but I did not finish the exam. What did it mean? You don't know, and because your faculty of interaction is not there, you just sit down. It's not about an exam. These are ways, they are speakings of the Spirit. Let me tell you this. One of the hardest assignments of the Holy Spirit is to transfer the will of God from the heart of the Father to the mind of the saints. It is difficult. That's why when God finds one man who is aligned, you better stay out of the life and the way of that man. He will clear you for, because he knows how hard it is. Jesus, Jesus, your Jesus is looking at the disciples 
and they are wondering why he's looking at them and he's seeing satan looking for a particular disciple to enter jesus is asking them a question who do men say that i am and they are all laughing no discernment and yet satan just came quietly and hijacked peter's faculty and jesus is still watching and the peter himself is happy oh you will not go to the cross and jesus looks and says get thee behind me satan and peter looks at me satan he said peter let me tell you the drama that has been happening that you are not even aware of all the while i was looking at you something was happening in the realm of the spirit satan continued to desire to sift you like wheat he says it is my prayer that saved you i have prayed for you that you faint not he said and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren There are many believers that pray but they are not transformed because they don't know what happens you have ears in the spirit you have eyes in the spirit you have faculties of interaction the only thing is that now respectfully speaking people like Kenneth E. Hagin taught of course knowledge revelation is progressive our fathers like Kenneth E. Hagin taught that we have five spiritual senses just like we have five physical senses well that may be true as at the time the revelation came but there are no five it's not five spiritual senses we have there are many spiritual senses that that um do not easily have physical expressions that's why all of them will be grouped and will just manifest as the same thing you would think you are having the same experience when i was praying yesterday my hands were hot when i was praying today my hands were hot your body interpreted it as heat but they were two different things it's just because your body is now limited it cannot it cannot express every impulse of the spirit hallelujah is that drizzling if it's raining we can we can do what we did last week please if we can walk people in um the season is almost gone so please let them come in let's make whatever sacrifice please sit down pray in tongues for one minute and then i continue we'll find somewhere this is a very serious series especially in the days that we live in Only you can satisfy me Only you can satisfy my soul Satisfy my soul Only you can satisfy me Only you can satisfy my soul Satisfy my soul only you can satisfy me. Only you, only you can satisfy my soul. Satisfy my soul. One more time. Only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul. That's why the Bible says, let him that has an ear. That means it is possible that you don't have that ear. Son of man, he said, what seest thou? He said, an almond tree. He said, you have seen correctly. You can see wrongly. Please pay attention. We're going to pray. A platform for growth Thank you all of you who are standing. Thank you so much for your sacrifice. Let's go to number four. Why do we pray? Why do we pray? According to scripture. Number four. Prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession. Write it down, please. Prayer is a platform for warfare 
and intercession don't worry wherever you can stand just find somewhere and stand a platform for warfare and intercession give us acts chapter 12 let's study the early church acts chapter 12 please it's a long reading but um the verse of emphasis will be verse 5 and then we continue now please look up that prayer is a platform for warfare now um when i say warfare especially in africa warfare means many things to many people there are people who believe that warfare is some carnal confrontation of spirits in the flesh that is an ever continuous process without victory i don't believe that and then others also believe that the concept of warfare is just some kind of christian talk that does not exist i also don't believe that there is a healthy balance concerning the subject of warfare that must be communicated acts chapter 12 look up please now about the time herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church so we're talking about a man here under the influence of wicked spirits to persecute the church please don't lose your focus don't lose your attention two and he killed james the brother of john with the sword so james is dead now number three and because he saw that it pleased the jews look at this wicked man he proceeded further to take peter also then were the days of unleavened bread okay during the feast for and when he had apprehended him he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after easter to bring him forth to the people so he's about to destroy someone the pillars of the church next verse peter look at this peter therefore was kept in prison but prayer was made without season of the church unto god for him prayer was made without season and when herod would have brought him forth that same night peter was sleeping between two soldiers can you imagine it aside from the fact that he's in prison the two soldiers held him he's tied with chains and they're also sleeping close to him so that if he moves and they wake up they can say where are you going to he was bound with two chains but the and the keepers before the door kept the prison next verse and behold the angel of the lord wait till next week when i will show you the ministry of prayer and the angels the angelic ministry that excel in strength if you do not understand the ministry of angels in prayer and the warfare dimension of prayer you will get into trouble the bible is full of the ministry of angels in prayer the angel of the lord came upon him and a light shined in prison and he smote peter on the side and raised him up saying arise up quickly and the chains fell off from his hand they are praying and praying correctly because jesus had taught them how to pray remember before now they were not getting results now jesus had mentored them and the, this, the apostles now were mentoring the early church so there was no confusion as to whether the prayer would be answered or not and while they prayed something was happening in the realm of the spirit we'll find out next week because the bible says that let it be done in the earth as it is in heaven and so an angel came from heaven to make sure what is in heaven happens in the earth he came to that prison and he said god thyself angels can speak and bind on thy sandals and so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me this is the angel next verse and he went out and followed him and wished not that it was true which was done by the angel but thought he was in a vision look at this he was already so used to visions he didn't know whether it was real or it was a visionary experience 
when they were past the first the second world they came to the iron gate which led to the city which opened of its own accord and they went out and passed through the street and forthwith the angel departed and said you can go now my brothers and my sisters look at this these are not parables can these things happen again why are they not happening if this is true and scripture cannot be broken that men prayed and physical angels let me give you let me give you a story i like teaching on these kinds of things listen i have many many stories on this let me give you one of my okay that would be the second or the third encounters with angels in the body now not in visions i was in abuja um one year i can't remember and then i got into a a bus and i highlighted i was at mararaba you know and my wallet fell and everything fell and the bus had gone i was with one of my friends and you know it was so frustrating for me um i think if i'm not mistaken i hope it will it would be when we're trying to prepare for one of our crusades or so and then everything had gone and the town it was busy you would not even know which of the buses or who someone would have carried it and i pleaded with my friend i said please you have to just get a bike and then go to maybe where the park is and then they'll begin to check i stood there and i was just praying in the spirit and i remember the scripture that just came he shall put his angels charge over thee and all of that now i tell the truth and i lie not i fear god i was standing there and the next thing a man is limping remember the story a man is limping with my wallet and brings to me and says take and just turns and goes away and i'm standing there and i'm looking at this man what is your name who are you at least let me say thank you and after a while I, I cannot remember seeing the man again the first time we we're going to hold our crusade in Joss we were there and quite honestly we we're confused and we did not know what to do suddenly a stranger walks up to me and says get a bus and get a loud megaphone he said go around the city remember and do publicity I never saw that man again angels are real our carnality has reduced us to a point where we don't even have the eyes and the perception you would be you would be joking to think everyone standing here is a human being do you know I, I tell you the truth and I lie not there are many times I shared it I started sharing it during the early days of koinonia but you notice I stopped I stopped saying it for a reason there are times that I would be ministering like this and suddenly you know many things happen as a man of God when you are ministering you cannot say everything there are times that I'm standing here already and I'm having multiple visionary experiences while I'm ministering. It's training. With time, your spirit is, you, you understand it so you are not distracted. And there are many times when God opens my eyes. Now I see people, now not from the body. I now see the spirit man of people. And suddenly, you know in the realm of the spirit, you will know that it's an angel now. Because they excel in light. And suddenly you will check and you will find out that, ah-ah, uh -uh, this person sitting down is not a human being. The moment they see me and we make contact, they will just stand up gradually and walk out. I've seen this thing many times when Koinonia started. I used to say it, but eventually I kept quiet because I don't want people to build their monuments. You know, people start to make all this uh, idolatry and the rest. So I understand what this scripture is saying. Listen, let me tell you, warfare is real. And it is important to be able to birth victory. James chapter 5 and verse 13 we pray because it is an instrument of warfare what is warfare establishing the will of god in spite of the contentions of darkness that's warfare engaging scripture engaging the mysteries of the kingdom in prayer to establish the will of god satan will never let your destiny go not without a battle just because god said all things are yours does not mean all things will come to you just because um god said oh you'll be a great man you'll be he will attack you he will attack your children he will attack everything that can be attacked i believe in warfare 
when it is biblically engaged. I believe that any believer who sits down and allows his destiny to move by default is in trouble. He will never win in life. Are we together? Warfare and intercession. What is intercession? Standing in the gap for someone else. Standing in the gap for a territory. Making petitions to heaven on behalf of of an individual on behalf of a territory listen do you know why god allowed for intercession because of this explanation i'm giving because assuming for instance the spirit of death is attempting to take my life this night and i do not have the faculty to discern i can become a victim of it and that means my destiny and all who are connected to me will be in trouble so god see this how it is it's a it's, it's a it's a it's, it's a revelation of god's mercy the mercy of God starts moving around that territory to find who has the discernment and the will to obey God. Do you understand? So it's like a cloud. The Holy Ghost will come upon somebody in his room. He will shake up and say, God forbid, I need to sleep. The Holy Ghost will live quietly, find another house. But somehow he will just come to someone who just gets up and says something is wrong. He now says, pray pray in the spirit and while you are praying he does not know why he's praying and i do not even know him but because he's in the body his prayer life will now save me that's why when we get to heaven many people receive thank you for things they say well what is that he said in 1999 remember one three days fast you did that you don't even know what it was for that fast was what secured the man who would later become the president but you will never know that it was your prayer. If Anna the prophetess did not intercede for Jesus, they would have killed him. Believe me. If Jesus could not die, the angel would not say, run. He was in the flesh. The only thing is that the body will not decay. Are we together? Anna the prophetess was praying imagine this kind of intercessor she sacrificed her life since her husband died see I'm teaching you many things in this series because if Anna the prophetess were in our generation and you saw Anna the prophetess and saw Apostle Joshua Selman Anna the prophetess will bow to me and say you are the great man of God and we are the quiet people whereas you do not know that the way things happen in the realm of the spirit those that may be making the greatest impact may not be the Joshua Selmans and all of these people as visible as we look there will be one quiet mama somewhere that is the backbone behind our success that we may never know God gives this mama a mandate and say mama you have 30 more years to live and your assignment every day is to pray for someone called Joshua Selman. Where is he in the world? You don't need to know him. I may never know that the health of this ministry, the health of my life, primarily may be founded upon that deep intercessory ministry. If you really find an intercessor somewhere, not just a, 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 a lazy person who just says I'm an intercessor, but a real intercessor, respect them. See, if I bless you, you see me, I prophesy to you. You will package, uh, uh, help those under the anointing. You will package offering and come and give me. Is that true? If I speak over your life, they can carry that message all around the world. People will watch the videos and see me speaking. They will open doors for me. But if I intercede for you, there is no man who will see me to say thank you. These are the people who are greatly prized in the spirit. Some of them are here. They don't even believe that they are in ministry. I just have the grace for intercession. Do you know there are times that I'm sleeping and it's as if they are soaking me inside hot water. I know somebody somewhere is shouting on heaven on me. I can always say, allow me to sleep small now. There are times I know it's prayer band. That fire is coming from prayer band Tuesday. <laughs> there are times I know that individuals are just praying. They prayed for Jesus. 
the Bible never said Anna the prophetess stopped praying after the dedication she just said my eyes have seen the consolation of Israel intercession is powerful listen to me don't sit back and allow the devil destroy your loved ones I shared with you the story about my mom one time that I saw what I saw you must learn to pray some of you are not only lazy spiritually you are responsible for the pain of many people this is why sometimes when God is quarreling people you think you are innocent he will come and say you are part of the reasons why these people are not doing well oh God why I put a burden on you to pray one time and you just carelessly said it's not my business there are selfish believers until God that's why God will use the face of someone you love it's not that something is wrong with that person that's the only way it's not always demons it is the only way to wake you up to pray because if you saw another person your selfishness will not allow you to stand up so you see the face of the person who promised to marry you and say no god this cannot happen i've waited long and god said that's it you will be rewarded for praying but that was the only skill to be able to lift you Hallelujah. Warfare and intercession. James 5.13 Is any man afflicted? He says, let him do what? Is any man afflicted? The biblical approach to affliction is any man challenged by a situation you cannot understand before you sit down and start using your brain because you see in the flesh you will calculate wrongly what is going on my children suddenly are falling sick in a way that i cannot explain suddenly money is disappearing in this family suddenly my wife my husband my children is like there is no peace suddenly my grandmother is hating me i came out in the morning three accidents before returning back home already if you are sensitive that is affliction the bible says don't sit down and start discussing scientifically it says start praying because when you pray among the many things that happen is that you begin to perceive you are allowing your spirit man in partnership with the holy spirit to draw forth what the real issue is and communicate to you hallelujah how many of you have ever been confident about a decision you were so bold until you prayed somewhere in that prayer you stood and said god thank you oh, this i would have died you felt like ghana is the place god is sending you in fact everything in you was just spelling ghana until you went to pray when that prayer was done you were embarrassed you just stood there and said so this i would have been on my way are we together you know powerful believers by this one thing they will tell you kai i want to do this this and that and then two weeks later they just keep quiet they say you won't do it again i know what has happened to them they have they have gone to fine tune that thing a brother just looks at a sister and can almost be confident and say no abba i know based on what i'm feeling this is my wife until you go to pray while you are praying the flesh and the feelings are giving way to destiny and when you rise up then you will know that you would have made nonsense of your life you now come back and say thank you Jesus are we together someone can come to you and say I'm a real estate mogul I'm this and that and that and you are sitting down you want to carry all your land papers and everything and give the person and you just say okay let me just sleep over it sir would you come tomorrow morning say oh fine no problem until you are sleeping in the night and you wake up and begin to pray and you find out that your entire destiny would have gone down because of lack of discernment when believers don't pray you know a believer who does not pray by the repetition of trouble that he always gets into see when you are getting into trouble again and again every bad thing waits till you come then it happens something is wrong with your prayer life i'm telling you this 
Let's hurry up. I'll give us two and then we'll end. Is this series already blessing you? Number what now? Why do we pray? Can you imagine we're just on why we pray? Why do we pray? Number five. Prayer according to scripture is a strategy to keep your faith alive. It's a strategy to keep your faith alive. Luke chapter 22. Media, please give us quickly. Luke chapter 22 from verse 30 to 32. Luke chapter 22, please. That ye may eat and drink at my table and all of that and all of that. 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, Satan had desired to have you like a possession, right? And that he may sift you like wheat. Huh? He says, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. So how does Satan sift men? He does something to your faith. What is faith? Conviction. Conviction. Listen. When Satan wants to sift you like wheat, remember the Bible said a double-minded man, let him not think he will receive anything from the Lord. So when Satan wants to make sure you don't receive anything, he will begin to make you doubt your convictions. He will manipulate the flesh realm and make sure that what you believed, God, but didn't you tell me this by January? And now you are thinking, is it God? Is it not God? Satan is attempting to sift you. Is it really extraordinary fruitfulness? God, this is September. Did Apostle really hear God well? Because it looks like it would have been the year where your stamina is built. Because this is my thing. It's been, I've, I've not seen any fruitfulness. Satan is sifting you like which? Let me tell you. And he says when you pray, you stop your faith from failing. Your conviction. There are many things that believing them may be difficult for you, but start praying. Start praying. A word has been spoken concerning you. Ah, by November, by December, this would have happened. Doors would have opened. You will say, Amen, but you too, you know, you don't believe it. Your pain has overwhelmed. You are used to prophecies not coming to pass, so you don't believe it. But when you begin to pray, something begins to happen in your spirit man it's like a gate it's like a compression that is broken suddenly you can believe god yes this is real lord i know you are able to do it prayer is a way that we keep our faith alive let me give us one more number six why do we pray the sixth reason why we pray is that it is a platform to make requests and petitions prayer is the authorized biblical platform to table your requests and to make petitions you don't make petitions in this kingdom by complaining the Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing let me tell you this most believers do not pray most of what we think is prayer is just blind fleshly carnal argument what is this is this how life will treat me and god you are watching like that are you praying no you are not praying you are lamenting lamentation does not have a harvest of answered prayer no unto him that answers prayer hears prayer not complaints hears prayer not grumbling Mark eleven twenty four, please quickly. Our time is gone. Mark eleven twenty four, and then Philippians chapter four and verse six. Mark eleven twenty four. Look at this. <clears throat> Jesus is teaching now. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire. Everybody say desire. desire. One more time. Say desire. desire. When you pray believe that ye receive them and ye shall what three things one your desire number two reception number three manifestation you first receive before you have you cannot have what you have not received 
you don't receive things physically you receive them in the realm of the spirit you have them physically so it says what things soever ye desire prayer is the channel that makes your desire to be received and then to manifest when you pray so you can have desires and leave them there and you find out that nothing ever changes in your life desires philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 philippians 4 and verse 6 look up please let's read together our time is gone but please read with me one to read be careful for nothing hold on the word there careful um it's not it's not trying to say you should live a careless life are we together the word careful there um what's what's the expression now huh the word there is anxiety are we together now other versions will correct it and say be anxious for nothing right so be anxious let's use for nothing then it says but in everything that means there is no matter that you should not pray for in everything the Bible does not isolate certain things and say don't pray for them are we together there is no issue that cannot be prayed for this is where we must put a little correction to our teaching on finance a lot of people say prayer has nothing to do with finance uh -uh. there are keys are we together anytime prayer is not the key prayer is the hand that holds the key in any case you will still need prayer either as the key or the hand that will hold the key to open the door a key does not open itself so prayer is important the bible says in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god this is a very interesting scripture because in one of the scriptures we read the bible says for your heavenly father already knows the things that you need and now he's saying make your request known to god god wants the saints to make their request known because he answers prayers you have many requests oh god my house rent oh god the issue of my stubborn child Oh God, the issue of my destiny. I'm tired of escorting men in life, not knowing where I stand. Oh God, the issue of my finances. Oh God, the issue of fruitfulness. Oh God, the issue of this and that, the issue of my job. It's been 10 years, 20 years now, no job. The Bible says, don't be ashamed to make your request known unto God. That means it is not out of scripture when you pray in understanding. You can make your request known in God to God are you seeing why sometimes we come with our request here at miracle service we are making it known to God it is scriptural God wants to know bring before him your request because he will answer James chapter 4 verse 2 and 3 James chapter 4 now look up look up God is speaking now requests are very important in as much as prayer is not is not just for only asking things there is a major part of prayer that was designed to allow your petitions reach heaven the bible says ye lost and have not that means ye desire so strongly and yet you don't have it ye kill huh, and desire to have and cannot obtain you fight that means look at the alternatives you have introduced whereas prayer would have still given it to you the inability to have prayed will make you to desire in an ungodly way that thing whether money or whatever and to kill even because of it and then to fight because of it he says ye have not simply because you ask not that means if you can ask there will be no reason to kill no jealousy none of these things because the same lord is rich unto all he's saying if you don't know how to ask you will continue to admire people and to hate people's breakthroughs and to hate their testimonies as though god isolated them and blessed them alone if you know how to ask the bible says you have not and you ask not then it says you ask and receive not because you ask amiss what we started correcting okay that he may consume it upon your lust. We'll deal with it, the patterns of prayer. What does it mean to consume it upon your lust? That means the ultimate scope of your desire is just to satisfy yourself. There is nothing kingdom in it. You will now understand the prayer of Jesus. Thy kingdom come. 
it is within the scope of the kingdom that he says give us our daily bread give us our daily bread so that we'll be strong enough to continue making your kingdom come once you detach the kingdom you also detach the possibility for your daily bread your daily bread is connected to your desire and your participation in making his kingdom come this is what he's saying listen to my teaching for your glory where i teach that in this kingdom god is not obliged to stand and partner with you on any matter that does not have a provision to give him glory our selfish world has mastered how to use the realm of the spirit to draw realities for our own personal desires why do you want a child why do you want the marriage why do you want the prosperity apostle i'm tired people have been looking down on me I'm, i want them to know that i'm not a nobody and god says that is the kind of nonsense prayer that will not be answered why won't it be answered because there is no provision for kingdom in it are we together now oh god i want all my children to excel why so that everybody will know that i'm not a small woman and god says this is a joke not in my kingdom it's not done that way lord i want money to buy a new rapper why so that every woman in that church will know that me too i'm not a i'm not you know, this and, and god looks at all these things and says, what do you think i am an atm uh, uh, machine he's the lord of all but let him find your heart plugged towards his kingdom come father i'm trusting you to give me twins so that I can hurry up and have children and have the grace to serve you. God says, before you finish, twins are on their way coming. You will roast every devil on the way between the second heavens and that womb and make sure those twins come. Let me tell you this. I have learned something about God. You want to see the speed of God in your life? Die to yourself and say, Lord, this is about you. It's all about you. Jesus, and all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. As if you should do things my way. You alone are God and I surrender. One more time. It's all about you. is one big secret in my life i submit to you you will see the hand of god in fearful ways when everything about your life becomes about him what name are you looking for for yourself if the name it is is just so that he will find expression then he will shake the heavens and the earth and give you that name wealth and prosperity there are many gullible people who love money oh god give me money why they mocked at me that day and lord this shame must live my life and god says uh -huh. this is not how i walk everything in my world is consistent with my purposes and if your life cannot find a bearing in my purposes you see let me tell you this there most of our prayer in church are lost driven prayers let's tell ourselves the truth what do i mean by lost driven prayer it is either the kind of prayer that was sponsored by a competitive spirit i want to have this too lord i want this anointing the other day i saw this guy prophesying as if i was not called into ministry god are you going to put this grace on me or just let me just go and look for a job and god says you hear what you are saying requests you ask and you have not because you ask amiss 
what is being amiss so that you will satisfy yourself i have cried this secret to the body of christ again and again and i pray that this time around believers will get it there is excellency in stepping out of the way and let god have his way when you let god have his way you will not be in the dark can god be in a place and his light not be on you this mundane pursuit for fame this mundane pursuit for recognition, this mundane pursuit for this and that is why many people pray amiss. Someone sent me a text one day. I said, ah, Apostle, you are enjoying, no? I said, you see the, the kind of talk. This, I know what he meant to say. Because they see all these photos and see all these things and and that statement is not a commendation it's a derivative of lost did God send you to ministry just to enjoy is ministry a platform is, is it because of the clothes the head oh, no all those things are there because of him and his purposes please hear me. if this is all you hear in the next two minutes to pray if you leave this place tonight with this purified motif that everything about me is for him get to that point in your life and watch God arise for you that is the point where anybody who touches you touches the apple of his eyes he will shake kingdoms for your sake the kind of prayer that produces power why am I praying for more anointing father greater power anointing greater revelation why why so that i will be a very senior man of god that people can see and acknowledge and god says not in my world in my dealings in my economy with men i will not walk that way are we together i believe in the power of god but it is very frustrating to not know how it can translate to the results of people your being anointed does not mean anything until lives are changed and transformed in a way that is notable enough please listen listen take note of it in a way that is notable enough in a crowd like this my brothers and sisters please reason with me that in a crowd of thousands of people like this and several others from around the world imagine that at the end of this service only three or four or five people are healed delivered or lifted by god's standard even by human standards you did a bad job so you are a blessing to the degree to which you have intimacy with god and you understand the operations of his divine power enough to be able to flow like a river shabakataya flow like a river so that in one hour someone who is probably standing I'm, I'm told they had to create a new overflow so let's use the overflow four right you're just standing at overflow four hoping lord will you touch me and in five minutes you check around and you cannot understand your life again because you have moved to another dimension his divine power his divine power please hear me whatever issue of concern it is the divine power of god that is able to produce it we're here thousands of us with our various requests representing our pain our disappointments our frustrations our expectations my assignment as a man of god is to bring your challenges face to face first with god and then his divine power and then if i can do that i'll finish my assignment my assignment is to connect your situation with the power of god and get out of the way and then you watch the wonder walking power of jesus when you don't get out of the way you become an interruption to the efficiency of the power so the assignment of an anointed man of god as it were is to allow the lord to use him by the spirit of god to connect the challenges of people to his divine power if you can do that a miracle service has started hallelujah and so then it becomes 
it becomes mandatory upon us men and women of god to study the systems that can help us connect the power of god to people's problems like you connect a a, a fuse to a socket and switch it on you finish yours and the gadget begins to work it works for as long as that connection is there mm. hallelujah praise the lord so let it not surprise you if within the next few minutes you turn around and cannot see what you came here with it is his divine power mm. his divine power remember the testimony of our precious mother was so touched when she shared that testimony just like that in the twinkling of an eye someone's life changes the twinkling of an eye a grace you did not come here with goes back with you a twinkling of an eye a challenge that you have had that has been age long listen let me tell you don't get too used to the hand of satan on your life just because his hand has rested for a long time does not mean it cannot be lifted you tried lifting it with different graces so they did their best but there are graces that can lift it is true it is true praise the lord your assignment tonight is to believe that his divine power is able to come through for you and then number two to be prepared listen listen please this is your own part now to be prepared to respond by faith what does it mean to respond by faith to listen for the instructions that make for your results it's important every result has a strategy a pathway that produces it if your challenge is jericho you need to know how to go around and shout if your challenge is the red sea you need to know how to use the rod to part it if your challenge is five loaves and two fish to feed five thousand you need to know the mystery of thanksgiving that makes for multiplication if your challenge is the leprosy of naaman you need to know how to go to jordan to wash all results are not produced by the same strategy it is the same divine power but your faith must be anchored on an instruction that is tied to it deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day it says that you will be set up on high above all nations of the earth and that all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you praise the lord that's how it works so while you take your eyes away from your pain you must set your gaze on something else jesus the possibilities is it true oh god that you can turn my family situation around seven of us came for this miracle service and lord i don't even know where you will start but then you listen you listen you listen sometimes it can come as one prophetic word and it's done look let me tell you something the ease with which miracles happen i think is the reason why many people cannot receive it how do you look at someone like this and say go it's done what does that mean you are making a mockery of me i sang praise and worship i rolled on the ground and i stood here and all you tell me is go was that not what naman was complaining about he said you mean you want to embarrass me i just go and wash in a river I thought you will even come out and salute me and give me something more intelligent but you see the ways of God are not like the ways of men Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus and he said the wind blow it where it listed he says you cannot tell where it's going nor where it's coming he says so is one who is led of the spirit you have to be spiritual to understand the ways of God you have to be spiritual because traditions of men can make the word of god of non-effect it can strangle the potency of god's word but tonight i agree with you and i know that there are people here who are determined that everything we are going to be doing here within the next hour or so that it will culminate to a tangible result let me tell you this i love jesus christ i love him with all my heart and i made a vow unto god 
that among the many things that will happen to the people that he ever brings to me and puts under my care wasting their time will not be part of it i made up my mind by god that you should not come for koinonia twice to testify no 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 you should come twice to grow you should come twice to learn you should come twice to know god but one encounter should be enough it's true one encounter apostle i came to take fresh fire one encounter one encounter i came to break the bands of witchcraft and wickedness in my family one encounter one encounter apostle my family members did not come with me but they asked me to represent them it doesn't matter one encounter the power of god master he says he told the centurion let me come to your house to honor you being a captain in the army he said no for i am also like you a man under authority i understand the stretching power of authority i may be limited as a person but the roman government has a jurisdiction and that whoever is under the influence of that government can feel the effect of the government so they may not be here but the earth is still the lord's so they are still within the jurisdiction of his reach and if you are a man under the authority of that owner then the power of god should flow riding on the integrity and the sovereign power of that owner to touch anybody anywhere this i believe this i believe this i believe apostle i don't even know the name of my situation i've gone to the hospital they have done everything jesus if he said he was just healer would have found reason to be afraid later on but he says i am the resurrection and the life what is resurrection giving life to something that has no business having life resurrection resurrection i am he that was dead but now is alive apostle i came here with my cv is it that god cannot give me a job i've gone around looking for jobs again and again i've applied everywhere god should see my family what then is the blessing if the anointing cannot change the situation what does it mean to be a blessing as a man of god does it mean to preach well does it mean to be sympathetic to people's situation as important as that is sympathy does not produce result it only provides comfort god did not call us to be sympathizers no he says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to then it begins to list all the things that will happen and then at the end of all of those things he says to give them beauty for ashes the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called oak or the trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might in their result be glorified john chapter 17 and verse 1 jesus christ lifted up his eyes to the heavens praying and he taught us a principle there verse one he says father the hour has come and then he said glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so how is god glorified when the son is glorified how is god glorified as a healer when the son is healed when the daughter is healed how is god glorified as a lifter when the son is lifted when the daughter is lifted how is god glorified as a deliverer the dimension of god that he gets glory from is the dimension that the result manifests in your life he cannot be glorified as one who is quick and powerful until your life testifies it your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your favor is real i testify your power is real i testify how then do you know the favor of god is real listen 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 your faith must grow to trust 
the difference between faith and trust is that faith is predicated on god's integrity are we together now it, uh, on who god is but trust is based on his integrity and his track record you cannot trust a man until there is a track record are we together if i'm meeting you for the first time dr emeka and they tell me you are a doctor i will have faith in you i can't trust you it's too early it's too early to trust you i will see what your injection does for me are we together now when you give me an injection and i cannot walk what should happen to you when you give me an injection i am fine then i come to you and you give me a recommendation and it works i begin to note you and associate you with my joy and then eventually i conclude that this man is worth my belief this man is also worth my staking my all to so that the day you give me an instruction that i do not understand i can reach back at the archives of your track record and say i may not know what you are saying but i know what you said and i know what i saw genesis 21 verse 1 genesis 21 i testify i testify that your goodness is real I testify, I testify that your goodness is real. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did to Sarah as he had spoken. Trust in the Lord. How do you trust in the Lord? Take cognizance of his benefits, be observant what did he do in 2001 what did he do in 2005 you see if the lord had not been on our side now may israel say on the strength of that track record they named him they gave a name that should not change a testament of their trust a testament of their trust so your assignment is to believe that God is able. Take your eyes away. I repeat, take your eyes away. Please take your eyes away from anything that is not Jesus tonight. And focus. Apostle, they've prayed for me. A prophet just like you prayed for me. An apostle just like you prayed for me. A pastor even conducted night vigils in our house. I know and I respect God and I respect the grace upon that man. Except that one more thing I did not teach you about the anointing is that not every anointing blesses you. The man must be sent. There were many widows in Zarephath, but to none was Elijah sent. When the word of God passes you, it does not bless you. It is when it is sent. He sent, not brought. He sent forth. It was when the king sent for Joseph that his life changed. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything. Not when you moved around. When I sent thee. Because every time he sends it, his integrity is upon it. Tonight, God is sending his word. To me, to you, to us, the word that leads, the word for your ministry, the word for your life is going to be a quick walk. Some of you write from the communion. As you partake from the communion, you finish your own miracle service. You will just join others in rejoicing. It's true. You know, yesterday I observed and we learned yesterday that the reason why the communion does not produce is because we are only eating bread and juice we have not discerned it the bible says there is a sin that a man can commit the sin of not discerning the lord's body you cannot discern the possibilities that come from that body for many years i took communion and i was left in the dark as to the relevance of this thing in my life I would just take the wafer and take the the drink and then stop there nothing happened until i found out that the life-giving factor of everything is understanding understanding is what gives life 
to the spiritual activities and the processes that we're involved with so it is not enough to just hear it is not enough to just do it is the understanding that sponsors what we do that produces the results i don't know if there are people here tonight who are here insisting that as surely as there is a god in heaven whatever i came with i must leave it here tonight it is important god is giving you understanding now when i came into the house of the lord then understood i the house of god is bethel not just a place of bread but a place where the bread is broken two men met jesus in m house and they began to discuss the messiah and he was there with them but they could not see and then when he broke bread the bible declares that their eyes were open and he departed My assignment is to continue to study continually by the spirit the processes that makes for the liberty of the saints much more than the transformation of the saints much more than providing an atmosphere for encounters the saints need to be brought to a point where they encounter the reality of God's power the power of God can be encountered hallelujah so we're going to partake of the communion very quickly and for many of you this will be one communion you will not forget it doesn't matter even if you are the one who serves your own communion you may serve it like a ritual the wafer does not have any power to do anything for you the bread the cup does not have any power but how shall these things be when i'm using only bread and cup the power of the highest shall overshadow that emblem and whatever comes out of it can produce any result a handkerchief and an apron is not even alive talk more of having faith but when his divine power comes upon it it becomes an instrument of signs and wonders the air that you breathe and the sound that is produced from you does not sustain any power except that when your speaking becomes the voice of god then it is no longer the words of men john said i am the voice of one so when you hear me you hear that one hallelujah when it's time to pray for the sick i like you to believe god believe god to set people free would we'll do it very fast because there are so many people and praying for the sick takes a lot of time we'll do it fast and then after that we'll do the deliverance and the impartation and whatever it is that needs to leave you it must go it must go this night it must go this night please jump up on your feet your divine power your divine power able to lift me to a higher dimension in the spirit your divine power is someone praying on the last day of the feast jesus came and said is anyone thirsty is anyone thirsty the final day of the feast go ahead and pray please inside outside lift your voices and pray Are you praying lord i believe it is your divine power now i know how the results will come your divine power i know how the lifting will come your divine power i'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. We are under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over us. 
We are under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over us. Lift your voice and pray. Sabarando Seneca Tabariatash. Tonight is my night. I discern. I discern. Sabrakato Seneca Prashd. And the Legabrande Zedika Shobragada Baladabash. Kratos Zaziga da Barunde Ketosh. Embra Kato Zaleke Pradish. Shebradika Posh. Rakato Varia da Baladabash. Rakato Varin de Skemeritash. Rakaparuda Siada Baladaba. He Barando Zele Carusia da Baladaba. Please keep praying. Hela baranda zazia hasa barando kate preke di balaraba. Hallelujah. John chapter six. John chapter 6 we'll begin our reading from verse 49 to 56 John chapter 6 your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead next verse this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die 51 I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. Not is like my flesh. Is my flesh. Which I give for the life of the world. 52. And the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Stop here. Just, just go back. Just go back. This is what he's saying. That in the flesh of the Son of Man and in the blood of the Son of Man is his life. That the life of the flesh is in the blood. Are we together now? Listen very carefully. So that when you partake, please keep that scripture. When you partake of it with understanding, the Bible says that you are not just taking a wafer, you are not just taking a drink, but that you are, you are opening up yourself to partake of the life of God. Next verse. 54. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, had, I told you the word there is not eternal life. It's the word zoe. It's not the longevity of the life, but the quality of the life. And I will raise him up on the last day, 55. We're stopping at 56. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. The last verse. He that eateth my flesh, this is it, and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. This is a theological concept called the doctrine of interpenetration. Is the system by which two separate entities are interwoven to become one. The same mystery in marriage. The same mystery with the spirit of God. So that by the mystery of partaking in the communion. That means the spirit should not know the difference between your body and God's body. Are we together now? Yes. Let me tell you what that means. Come. Look at this. Emeka, come. Watch this. If this lady is his wife and she's weak and he's strong, his strength is her own too. You understand that? Are you getting me? Not part of his strength. His strength. So if you say she's strong, you are right. Are we together now? This is very important now. That means that when she's strong and he's weak, 
her strength is his strength too interpenetration and so now when you partake of this although your body may be weak and frail although your finances may be weak and frail although your ministry may be weak and frail although your body may be ravaged by all kinds of demons but here you are introducing like you are shaking the hand of the other partner in a wrestling and here he comes through this mystery as little as this is let me tell you when you understand this mystery you will not even be able to hold this thing you see like this hallelujah i'm going to pray on this and then we're going to distribute it around it's simple enough for you to open you just here open the wafer and then the drink and please the moment you do do not litter the ground do not litter the ground i don't know what provision has been made for that but if no provision has been made whilst you take it provided you are not under the anointing just pass it to the last person at the aisle and then you make it easy for the ushers or whoever is involved to just pick them up you can use the off the bowls or whatever you have to have them we're going to pray please pray in one minute and mention the things that must live your life because they are not found in the life of the Christ please pray by wisdom oh God heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the season creating day and night turning darkness into light arranging the stars to your pleasing but i can't Blessed are you, O Lord our God, whose words brings in the evening. Please pray in one minute. We discern your body. We discern your body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, it should go round. I believe that they just brought this to represent the communion. I'm going to pray on this. This is ordinary welfare and a drink. But not after the power of God comes upon it. It says anything receives power after the Holy Ghost comes on it. Not just men. You shall receive power. The you can be this. Can receive power. Provided the Holy Ghost comes on it. He didn't say men shall receive power. No. Anything receives power when the Holy Ghost comes upon it. Your pain receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Your ministry receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Your communion receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon this. I lay my hands upon this communion representing all others that are not here I decree oh God that in a very strange way may your power flow through this in the name of Jesus let it bring miracles let it bring all kinds of deliverances in the name of Jesus whoever partakes of this tonight in the name of Jesus I declare instantly may your power begin to rest upon them let all kinds of breakthroughs begin to happen. Let infirmities give way in the name of Jesus. Let deliverances, let devils and demons begin to leave. Let doors begin to open. In the name of Jesus Christ. My flesh is meat indeed. 
we partake with understanding we partake with understanding please make sure everybody something will begin to happen to you as you partake of this you will marvel and wonder at the power of the communion Go ahead, take it with faith and watch the wonder-working power, the wonder-working power of Jesus, the wonder-working power of Jesus. bring all those under the anointing out please bring them out quickly while we wait for the rest to finish please just bring them out quickly something is opening up in your spirit man my flesh is meat indeed my blood is drink indeed Please bring those under the anointing. There is a reason why I ask you to bring them. I want to pray for them. Something is already happening in the realm of the spirit. Whoa. Please be patient tonight. God is setting people free. When there is understanding to your spiritual activity, then the power is released. The power is released. You will not believe the kinds of burdens that are leaving people already. Shalakaparuda mm. Seketa. My flesh is meat indeed. My blood is drink indeed. He that eateth of my flesh and drinketh of my blood hath my life. Yeah, 
not been planted by my father will be uprooted is it not written in your word that for this purpose the son of God was made manifest that he may destroy I decree in the name of Jesus we are going to begin to minister now that every force that is not of the Christ Right now, I decree and declare by an apostolic and a prophetic rod scattered around this crowd, inside and outside, everybody under any kind of bondage, I decree be free now. Be free now. I command judgment on strange spirits in the name of Jesus. The spirits of ancestry, the workings of bloodlines and territories, I come against you by the God of heaven. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. Listen, we are still praying. Please pay attention. I'm praying now. The Lord is showing me families. I'm seeing families under an intense yoke of retrogression. Nothing moves in that family. You can go to school. It doesn't make any difference. You can get a job. It doesn't make any difference. Have a business. It doesn't make any difference. I stretch my hands. Where are those people? Inside and outside. I declare right now. The power of God is coming upon you. It's time for your family to be released. At the count of three. One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. I lose your family. I set them free. I set them free. Shamanda kaskabarakata. Embreketeka paroto seteka. Sheketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeket
I declare freedom on those families now. I declare freedom. Shapas Kote Barakata. Don't be distracted. Just pay attention, please. Samarakato Zegedesh. Ilabanda Rahas Kabarukato Zadekata. Paruza Zianakata. Brekate la Kuzianamas. Kratena Zaziamakato. You rise to a level and then you crash back. It's a pattern that exists in families. There's nothing wrong with rising. Keep rising. But you plateau at a level and then you crash back. I stretch my hands now. This is what the Lord is showing me. My God. My God. I decree and declare. The spirit that causes men to rise up and crash back in shame. Represented in anyone here. The legal hold upon which you operate is caused now in the name of Jesus I release such people right now be released in the name of Jesus be released in the name of Jesus overflow three please lift your hands the Lord is showing me something happening in overflow three overflow three please lift your hands mighty God mighty god i see a lot of attacks serious attacks on overflow three i don't know for whatever reason that the people that are sitting there i'm seeing a lot of attacks at the count of three overflow three i want you to shout the name jesus and there will be a mighty deliverance there overflow three one two three shout jesus Hallelujah. I'm seeing the gate of a prison and I'm seeing people inside. The gate of a prison, like the front of a prison. And I remember scripture says to open, to set at liberty them that are bound. There are people who are moving but are in prison. All sorts of prisons. Right now I decree and declare, even by the power of the Holy Ghost, let the doors and the chains and the yokes that keep you in bondage i declare that those chains are loose now i declare that those chains are loose now and for all those in front here representing all those that i'm praying for i declare not only that the spirits leave you but that whatever they took from you, as surely as the God of heaven lives, your families must testify of that restoration. Therefore, leave them now. Go, go. Out of them now. In the name of Jesus, release their families. Release their spiritual lives. Release their finances. Paradox is a hasaka paradosia. Lembra geto scalaricias, hebras godash. Prakato baradu zaziana katabaladash. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, this road, lift your hands. I just see angelic activities happening here, and I'm seeing something being removed out of people's stomachs. This is what I'm seeing here. Something is being removed out of people's stomachs. That's what the Lord is showing me. Just this role. I don't know what it is, but God is uprooting something that should not be there by the Spirit of the living God. Let it go. Let it go in the name of Jesus. I place the word of God upon that situation. It must let you go right now. The Lord is taking something out. I still continue to see this vision. God is taking something out of people's stomachs.
the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty there is liberty there is liberty there is liberty I'm seeing the feet of a man and I'm seeing the feet of a man under chains under chains this is what I see and the Lord is showing me fire coming to break and consume the feet I know that this vision is a representation of stagnation again over men and families and I declare right now according to that which the Lord has shown me in the name of Jesus that anyone whose feet is being tied in the same position right now by the power of the Holy Spirit right now something is happening to people I decree I decree and I declare let there be liberty now inside outside let there be liberty right now let there be liberty liberty I command progress to your life move forward I push you by prophecy move forward make progress move forward make progress I forbid stagnation move forward make progress I don't know how to pray this prayer now. Those who are fine up here can return to their seats. I want to pray a prayer and this will affect a lot of people. You don't have to bring the people out. I found myself pray this prayer again and again and again and again. Almost everywhere I've traveled in the last two to three months, the Lord has mandated that I pray this prayer. And my goodness, the testimonies that have come from this. This is the Lord walking in the midst of his people. That lady is not yet free, my friend. Osha, be discerning. In the name of Jesus, that lady is not yet free. It's a realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power. Moving in this place, we're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy. Please someone to join the PR can join the ushers protocol can join the ushers I want to pray there is a grace for speed there is an exact grace speed is not progress no no there is a difference between progress and speed I had an encounter with the Lord and he placed this grace upon my life if not that it happened I know there is advancement and I know there is speed but I never knew what it was and how it operated until the Lord gave me an encounter truly let me tell you there is a real grace for speed and when that grace comes on you you will join the world in shock as to what becomes of your life and the Lord wants that grace to come on somebody this night there's someone here that needs this grace this is why you came it's not like you are stagnated 
but it takes forever if you will believe if you will humble yourself this night and open your spirit you will be surprised I'm going to pray this prayer the reason why I ask some people to join is because every time I pray this prayer people begin to run in the spirit and by the spirit I don't know why it happens that way be sensitive please and then it is of the spirit please don't ask me why it happens that way but if you will let me pray this prayer tonight God can make five years the result of five years to come within even a month I know it works when you have this grace on your life you don't fear delay it makes no difference you will gain time within moments I decree and declare by the privilege of God's grace I stretch my hands inside everywhere overflow one two three online father I pray right now let the grace for speed at the count of three come upon someone one two three take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now I shift you speed 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 to your spiritual life speed to your finances speed in ministry speed in business speed upon your influence this is a major answer to your prayer i declare it again speed speed receive it receive it it is not by might nor by power but by the spirit of god you can be picked up upon the wings of the spirit and do things that eyes have not seen that ears have not heard i pray it again those outside receive it those outside receive it i declare speed in the similitude of elijah you will run and you will overtake the chariots of ahab Hallelujah. 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 We are going to pray. We have to redeem time. There is a lot to do. Your wife started a journey in the spirit. I'm seeing a prophetic progression in her life. There is a prophetic mantle that is searching for her. It's begun gradually. This woman you are seeing, as frail as she may look, but the hand of God will come upon her and she will speak forth the purposes of God with power. I stretch my hands upon you and I pray that the spirit of God will perfect. Let there be a birthing, a birthing of the things that he has begun upon your life. A betting of the things that he has begun my friend come this man we may not have time to prophesy to people there's a lot to do lift your hands I don't know you you are coming from somewhere and there are two graces that God is bringing upon your life number one is for your own benefit restoration that's what I hear number two this speed that you see I prayed for is coming upon you I stretch my hands may that grace in the name of jesus first for restoration let there be a restoration of everything the devil has stolen and then i declare speed you receive it now move forward go forward in the name of jesus christ hallelujah there's an elderly woman here called rebecca 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 if we talk to people, the time will be gone. We have to honor it so that we can do some other things. Who is that? Rebecca. Please, when you find the person, I want to talk to her. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray for the sick. Kai.
this woman is outside you are not inside you are wearing a, a red like wrapper on your head the same with what is down on you confirm it mama your name is rebecca where are you from outside i will pray for you now i don't know you have never seen you but i want to pray for you the lord is going to honor you i decided to take a pause because um the lord just asked me to stand here that's why i'm standing here i'm standing here because i saw something that looked like a bird just come out of someone right here like this just like that just out of someone this is what i saw in the name of jesus release this family now release this family now in the name of jesus christ madam i'll pray for you your name is rebecca too please come i will pray for you i found the person i'm ministering to but i'll pray for you from where madam from where from area c area c yes sir. i want to pray for you what's wrong with your back back pain yes, yes. this is what it's i'm true. seeing you it's get up true, in the morning true. And, true. and then you feel a lot yes, of pain sometimes yes. you cannot even wash yes, yes. number two your chest too yes, it's true. severe it's true. chest around the breast yes, region here. True, the lord is setting true, you free true. right now madam yes. In the name of Jesus, let it be over right now and forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ah! I just had like a car crash in my ears. You know how an accident just happens right now. This is what I just had in my ears. And that the family that that should happen for is in this place. I'm going to pray right now. Be free now. I command death. You are a spirit. I judge you by the God of heaven. And to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. I want to pray for you, madam, in the name of Jesus Christ, that God himself will bless you and not only bless you Where are your children, madam? Huh? They're here. Your children are here? Yes. Where are they? Patient. Isaac. Patient and Isaac. And Sarah. This may be the last word and then we have to pray for the sick. There's a lot. Patience and Isaac. Yeah. Now only will know they're here. Let me just pray for you. If, if you're the only one who can represent them. Stand up, please, my friend. Mama, I will pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ because I'm seeing a very major breakthrough coming to this family. The Lord himself is bringing it to a very major breakthrough. I have no business saying anything God did not tell me. I've not prayed the prayer yet, yet you are receiving it. It's the grace for favor. The grace for favor. The grace for favor. This man will be like a well-watered garden that the favor of God will call him Beulah and Hephzibah. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you, Ma. Please hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, the breakthrough that the Lord shows me, let it come and come speedily. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are her daughter? Let me pray for you, my dear. In the name of Jesus Christ. They will not say there is something in your stomach growing. Huh? I'm rebuking something. They will not tell you that there is a growth that is growing in your stomach. I just laid my hands and God is healing someone in overflow one. Oh, please hold on. There is a growth. There is a growth. There is a growth. This has been characterized by extremely painful your period is extremely painful but more than that there is a growth just around your abdominal area overflow one you don't have to come out the power of god is touching that person right now in the name of jesus christ 
my dear in jesus name by the spirit of the living god we declare your liberty complete total final in jesus name i pray praise the lord now we're going to pray for the sick praying for the sick takes a lot of time our time is already gone i i bless god that there are a number of hands tonight now listen we believe in the power of god to touch people to lift people and most times you would notice in my external ministrations i don't have time to minister to people one by one but because this is a miracle service dedicated for that the lord has honored us to be a light on this wise in this city and it is important that we're fair enough to just allow the power of god extend to people we'll do it very fast um all of the overflows all of the overflows i would request that you just move those trusting god for healing particularly please i would request that you move to the front of your projector screen that's where you are going to be prayed for um the ones that spill over do i call that overflow five now i will just request you to be patient we are going to assign a person or two there to minister to you but overflow four three two one and right in here you are here you came standing in for someone or standing in for yourself please make your way out here very quickly and let's trust the god of heaven to set you free you are here full of faith please stand up please stand up if you kneel there will not be space just come stand it doesn't matter you don't have to come in if you're outside just go to your overflow please hallelujah myself alongside the men and the women of god represented here will be praying for you look how many people are trusting god to touch them hallelujah now please you don't have to ask anybody to prophesy or speak just let them minister to you if there is need to speak any words they will let you know praise the lord there are so many people this night and so we'll do our best so we can gain time and just just line everybody here and then we'll pray for you praise the lord prayed for just be patient and allow the men of god minister to you while that is happening our time is already gone please stretch your hands if you've not submitted your request um you can just wave it and someone will pick it up from you especially for those outside you're yet to submit your request just stretch your hands right here and let us agree this hold on please this is not religion this is not tradition this is not a ritual this is a mystery it's a revelation let us not get used to doing this just as a ritual for the miracle service because when we have the form without the power then it will not bless us there have been many many wonderful testimonies that have come out from here and um, since I'm the only one here, let the men of God minister to you. If you are still being ministered to, just focus on the ministration. But then for all others, just stretch your hands towards me. And let's agree that these Egyptians we see today, that we will see no more. Please agree. Release your faith and believe we are praying. We may not be able to prophesy to you personally. We may not be able to give you a word of knowledge. But this is a representation of your heart, your pain, your desire, your expectation. The Bible says, and thine expectation shall not be cut short. Stretch your hands and let's agree. There is a God that answers prayers. Shabaradagatavarakotos. <laughs> Is someone praying online pray the overflows pray father we declare we are declaring as the church we are releasing an anointing the divine power of God upon these requests some of these requests are death sentences some of them are humanly impossible situations 
But unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Zakosh kamaranda kaparuza zekataparia katalakosia. Shekes kebranda katobra asada katabalada baka. Rekete katabarada baka tobarato zaziana kata. Shkala baranda kaparuza ziana kata. In the name of Jesus, we declare upon these requests a representation of the tears and the pain of your people. We decree and we declare. Makratos kalambre de keparuza ziakata bradias. Ile peretos ziakata baranda gadash. Kritos kalabarakata balanabush. Shalabaranda kapurus. Likete kete kete baradabash. We decree and we declare. Manda prados kaziza hash kalabaranda kata. Arise for your people. By the abundance of your mercy, give your people testimonies in the name of Jesus. Jiprakatos, Kalabarakata. Believers, pray. We are agreeing. Likato Janana Katabarados. Jabros Katabaranda Kata. Supernatural manifestations of your power. Supernatural manifestations of your power. Supernatural manifestations of your power. Hela barakata sosa brende kedebash. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we declare supernatural workings of miracles tonight. We declare healing miracles. We declare miracles of provisions. We declare miracles of jobs. We declare sentences of death are broken. In the name of Jesus, we declare supernatural interception, angelic interventions tonight. We declare diverse kinds of miracles, diverse workings of miracles. In the name of Jesus, we declare creative miracles. We call new organs, we call new jobs, we call for children. We call for deliverances of families. We declare miracles on every side. Let tears of family be wiped away. In the name of Jesus. We declare diverse testimonies tonight. By the workings of miracles. By the divine power of God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your, the heavens are open in the name of Jesus. We thank you for creative miracles. We thank you for money miracles. We thank you for supernatural deliverances. We thank you, Lord, for manifesting your power. We thank you for miracle babies. We thank you for miracle job. We thank you for special miracles. Father, Lord, we thank you. For the manifestation of the world you have decreed over our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we receive answer to every prayer request here tonight in the name of Jesus. We receive answers tonight in the name of Jesus special miracles uh, in the name of Jesus diverse kinds of testimonies uh, in the name of Jesus angelic interventions uh, in the name of Jesus supernatural supplies uh, in the name of Jesus great open doors uh, in the name of Jesus we give you praise oh God uh, in Jesus name we are prayed Amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus praise. We agree that as we have declared, it is done in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Our time is gone. Please give me two minutes. We must do the impartation. We have been fasting. We have been praying. And we have trivialized impartation in the body of Christ. We are always looking for people to lay hands on. Always looking for people to prophesy on. 
So every time we talk about an impartation, there is hardly an expectation. But a real impartation brings result. You can carry something now that you did not come here with. Please believe. An impartation is not just an anointing for ministry. I told you it's a transference of possibilities. Praise the Lord. So in the next two, three minutes, please let your heart be opened. You don't have to bring anybody out under the anointing. Just guide them, but please receive. Please receive. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. No matter the quality of your secret place, you will need impartation. There are possibilities in your life that cannot evolve just from your secret place. You will need to tap into the provision that has been vested in the body. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus. The grace, you don't have to kneel. Please, you don't have to kneel. The grace that makes for a new level of visions. People have lost visions in the body of Christ. We tell lies that we are seeing, but we are not seeing anything. Father, the eyes that see genuine visions, let there be a restoration. Let that mantle fall upon someone right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the eyes that can see into the realm of the spirit, the ears that can hear the sound of the spirit, receive it now in the name of Jesus that prophetic river locked up within your spirit in the name that is above all names the grace for the prophetic in a new dimension who is this grace coming upon mabato shabarakata embreketeta upon all flesh he says i will pour out my spirit receive that anointing now in the name of jesus i believe in miracles and i believe that there is a distinct grace for signs and wonders i'm stretching my hands i'm seeing a dove this is what i'm seeing just like a bird hovering round, in the name of Jesus Christ, upon as many whose hearts are open, Father, the anointing, the real anointing, for signs, for wonders, pari brakatos kebarata, inside, outside, especially upon men and women of God, I decree and declare, let this grace for signs and wonders fall upon you now, in the name of Jesus, fall upon you now for your church for your fellowship for your prayer group i say it again for your church for your fellowship for your prayer group receive it in the name of jesus the spirit of wisdom there is a spirit of wisdom it says doth not wisdom cry Wisdom speaking says, with me are, it says, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. It says, with me are riches, wealth, and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness. I declare, the grace to know what to do is called the spirit of wisdom. The grace to know what to do. Let it come upon you right now. Let it come upon you right now. Let the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now. Let the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now. Please help those under the anointing. Talabarus kanamahashanas. Ratakapalusa siadas. I want to release favor. The grace that can make a king say up to half of my kingdom. There is a grace for favor. I testify to you people of the living God. There is a grace for favor. It is not of him that run it. Nor of him. It is not of him that, that um, run it. What's the scripture? Win it. Nor of him that run it. But of the Lord that showed mercy. 
He said, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. And the reason why you have mercy is because the time to favor her, yea, the set time. Favor will take away hardship from your life. Not just financially, even spiritually. I decree and declare, Zakapo Shambra Kaposeneash, Elekate Pradeko Sonomakata, receive the grace for favor. It's coming upon you. Receive the grace for favor. Receive the grace. Favor in ministry. Favor in business. Favor in ministry. Favor in business. Favor in ministry. Favor in business. In the name of Jesus. Every geography has its favor. May the favor associated with your geography. If it was on the rocks, the king built on the rocks. It was an advantage. If it was the sea, they channeled the water for productivity. Every territory has access to favor. I declare that the favor apportioned for your territory. Let it rest upon you right now. I want to pray for the spirit of revelation to make all men see the fellowship of this mystery. Let me tell you this. I confess to you sincerely under God that by the privilege of God's grace, I'm a student of the word. But I can tell you this. No matter how frequent you read this, there is a spirit that must come on you for your eyes to see. Otherwise, sometimes you will see, but what you will see is error. Sometimes what you will see will deceive you. I'm praying for you. We need revelation. We need revelation. We need revelation. We need revelation. Some of you started with a rich deposit of this spirit. But as it is right now, you open scripture and you don't see anything. All you continue to do is copy the messages of men of God. Verbatim, I declare that a unique grace for revelation. Let it rest upon you right now. Access, inside, access, inside, access, inside, into the mysteries of the kingdom. This is the year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I believe there is a grace for wealth. I believe it. I believe there are principles for wealth. I believe there are understandings that can bring resources. But I believe there is a grace. There is an exact spiritual grace that works by causing men to come with their blessings. When that grace came upon Saul, three men holding two loaves of bread each saluted him and gave him one. In the name that is above all names, in this season that God has ordained for the body, that in addition to the prosperity of our souls, in addition to understanding influence and the principles of spiritual transformation, let the grace that can cause a man to rise and become as strong as a nation financially, may that grace rest upon you. May that grace rest upon you. May that grace rest upon you. In the name of Jesus, I believe there is a grace that shields men from destruction. He said, destroy it not, for there is a blessing in it. Don't touch this one. There is something upon it. I decree and declare, let the mark that exempts men from terrorism, from kidnapping, from assassination, from accidents, the grace that exempts, receive it right now for you and for your family receive it right now receive it right now i declare that whatever you have lost coming here it doesn't matter how long please believe release your faith right now in the name of jesus christ i command a sevenfold restoration i command a sevenfold restoration restoration of anointings of money of ideas of relationships of access of illumination in the name of jesus i pray for every ministry represented here 
whatever has clamped your wings so that your influence cannot spread beyond certain borders i declare by the power of the spirit shift to a new dimension shift to a new dimension of teaching of the miraculous of the demonstration of the spirit in the name of jesus christ i will multiply them they will not be small i will glorify them they will not be few whatever keeps you small in the name of jesus i decree and declare that power is broken over you now all those trusting god for jobs here yeah. you are trusting god you have agreed with god and said lord said to me give me an honorable job i release my faith with you and i decree and declare in the name of jesus that by this time next month let it please the lord that you return with testimonies let me pray for those in business father the grace that came upon tyre and sidon that made them to be called the marketplaces of the earth i decree and declare that the spirit not only of innovation but the mastery to exchange your value the grace the fortitude to know how to exchange your value such that you are rewarded may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus christ I speak to every dying business here. Hear the word of the Lord. Come alive now in the name of Jesus. Everyone trusting God for the fruit of the womb. In the name of Jesus. Whether for you or for your loved ones. We agree by the power that put Jesus in the womb of Mary. In the name that is above all names. It's called the power of the highest. That can put a seed in the womb of a woman and keep that seed until it delivers may that grace and that power come upon you now we cause barrenness we cause impotency in the name of jesus whoever has what it takes to favor you the bible says withhold not good from them that is due when it is within your power i declare whoever has the power to support you the power to help lift you we compel them by the spirit to favor you in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray in the name of Jesus we are rounding up the prayer and fasting many of you have stretched your capacity spiritually I declare the fire of prayer that can burn an incense and cause it to reach heaven in the name of Jesus every attack on your prayer life shakapo sana kaparagadosh reketele kotosobadia let the seven lampstands of your prayer life be lit back right now in the name of Jesus Christ receive the grace to travail receive the grace to pray any evil and wicked company and association around your life you are not free till your association is free i declare to you you may be nice but you are surrounded by wicked people who do not fear god i declare a separation between you and the wicked I declare right now divine direction for people who are saying Lord what is the next step in this season should I stay here or should I go 
the Bible says, and thine ear shall hear a voice. Listen, let me tell you, one mistake to miss the will of God can cost you years before you return. I declare accuracy of perception in the name of Jesus Christ that the God of heaven will give you peace by all means in the name of Jesus the last prayer point and we are done thou shall anoint Aaron and his sons and thou shall put upon him some of your honor honor is a grace it is transferable honor can be put upon a man in the name of Jesus Christ it says, therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed you with an oil of gladness above your fellows. This is not in a competitive manner, but I pray for you. The grace that distinguishes men from the crowd, may that grace rest upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Let it be from tonight that miracles and testimonies that you have never seen in your life, we release them. Listen, listen. Noah released the dove from the ark after the rain. It returned back as proof that it did not have a resting place. Then he waited a while and returned and it came back with a little olive, an almond tree, an olive tree plant as a sign that life was restoring he sent it back the third time and it did not come back again this is how testimonies are they can be sent and they return because the condition for them to stay is not there and then they return again and say the anointing is now being introduced in that life and by the third time they are ready to be established i pray for you every long-standing testimony that has already been released from the throne and for whatever means has refused to be established in your life i declare right now in the name of jesus let that testimony manifest in your life now let that testimony manifest in your life now Anyone that says over his dead body for you to succeed, may God answer their prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for all of those who have come from far. I agree with you. I release my faith. Whether for the miracle service tonight or all through the prayer and the fasting, I agree. The same way Moses tabernacled upon the mount and returned with the radiance of the glory upon his face, return with the grace to prove that you met God. Return with the testimonies that prove that you met God. Return with the signs, the wonders, the transformation, the illumination. Return with the evidences of an encounter. In the name of Jesus. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our time is gone. I sincerely apologize. But we thank the Lord for the encounter tonight. You will live to testify. Very quickly, please, let's, let's settle down. Very quickly, please just help that woman so she doesn't injure anyone. There are people here please listen overflow one two three four online there are people here who probably have been attending the conference or just came in here tonight and whilst you heard me teach and whilst you saw the things that the lord did in this place the holy spirit began to convict you that you need jesus jesus is not an idea jesus is not something and someone you can do without i believe with all my heart that and please prepare to clear the way for them overflow one two three if you are at the door please shift there are people here under the sound of my voice who are saying apostle if you will make an altar call i need jesus i need him desperately i need him truly 
there are others who are saying i love jesus but for whatever reason i need a restoration and i need my life back with him whether you belong to any of these categories please inside and outside i'm only going to count five don't be ashamed don't be afraid i want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand here it will be my joy and delight to lead you to jesus don't wait for someone to come before you be the first i'm counting one come quickly come quickly koinonia let's honor them let's motivate them as they come please clear the way for those who are coming from outside two apostle I'm, I'm not sure if i'm born again or not join them join them join them join them i come from a christian family am i born again no sir join them i have very good friends am i born again no sir join them The Lord is still talking to someone. I would want to come, but I'm afraid of my friends and those we came with. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, he said, I will be ashamed of you before my father. I believe the Lord is still speaking to a few people. If you're coming, please come quickly. Young, old, make your way. Let tonight be your night of salvation. He says, in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness today if you hear his voice do not harden your heart hallelujah if there are any ones coming just allow them to quickly come i appreciate every one of you for making this bold decision please mean it sincerely and truthfully lift your right hand and say after me believing that jesus is here say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you that you are the son of God tonight I receive your life I receive your grace and I declare please help them and I declare that salvation is mine new life is mine from today till forever Jesus is my Savior is my lord is my friend i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin.